Ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you the 2018-2019 Homecoming Court of Sulphur Springs High School. Joanna Duran. Joanna is the 18-year-old daughter of Cristobal and Elena Duran. She has attended Sulphur Springs schools for 13 years. Joanna is a member of the Sulphur Springs Band, Blue Blazes, Key Club, Dare to Dream, and FFA. She attends Peerless Baptist Church. After high school, Joanna plans to attend Northeast Texas Community College in Mount Pleasant and major in anatomy and physiology. She plans on becoming a physical therapy assistant and later transferred to Texas A&M Commerce to become a physical therapist. Tonight, her escort is her father, Mr. Cristobal Duran. Maddie Millsap. Maddie is the 17-year-old daughter of Brad and Lisa Millsap. She has attended Sulphur Springs schools for 13 years. Maddie is in the top 10% of her class and is a member of the Sulphur Springs High School varsity volleyball and softball teams, Key Club, Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America, and National Technical Honor Society. She is also involved in Hopkins County Teen Leadership, First Baptist Church Youth Group, and is president of the National Honor Society and High King Club. After high school, Maddie plans to attend the University of Oklahoma and major in finance or accounting. Tonight, her escort is her father, Mr. Brad Millsap. Madison Clark. Madison is the 17-year-old daughter of Cal and Valerie Clark. She has attended Sulphur Springs schools for 13 years. She is a member of the Sulphur Springs High School Blue Blazes, Family Career and Community Leaders of America, and the Culinary Arts Program. After graduation, Madison plans to attend Northeast Texas Community College for an associate degree in applied science for culinary arts and later attend Auguste Escoffier School of Culinary Arts. Tonight, Madison's escort is her father, Mr. Cal Clark. Madison Caprarota. Madison is the 17 year old daughter of Derek and Gina Nordowney. She has attended Sulphur Springs schools for four years. Maddie is a family, member of Family Career and Community Leaders of America, Key Club, Future Farmers of America, High King Club Secretary, National Honor Society of high school scholars and works as an office aide at Barbara Bush Elementary School. She is also involved in Bright Star Baseball and is Leo's buddy. Maddie was the junior lieutenant of Sulphur Springs Blue Blazes. After high school, Maddie plans to attend Texas Tech University and major in psychology with plans of becoming a child psychologist for autistic children. Her escort tonight is her father, Mr. Derek Nordowney. <laughs> Elena Bledsoe. <laughs> Elena is the 17-year-old daughter of Jeff and Loretta Bledsoe. She has attended Sulphur Springs High School for Sulphur Springs Schools for 13 years. Elena is a member of the Health Occupation Students of America Club, Health Science Technology Education, and Practicum of Health Science. 
After high school, Elena plans to attend Paris Junior College to finish up her prerequisites for nursing school, then transfer to UT Tyler to pursue a career in nursing. Elena is escorted by her father, Mr. Jeff Bledsoe. Maddie Ray. Maddie Ray is the 17-year-old daughter of Kyle and Leslie Ray. She has attended Sulphur Springs schools for seven years. Maddie is a member of the Sulphur Springs High School Band, Vice President of National Honor Society, UIL Academics, and the Hopkins County Leadership Class. Maddie is a faithful member of Journey Baptist Church's youth group. After high school, Maddie plans to attend Texas A&M University College Station and major in sociology with the intent of pursuing a career in social work. Tonight, her escort is her father, Mr. Kyle Ray. Jacqueline Espinoza Frias. Jacqueline is the 18-year-old daughter of Santiago Martinez and Fran Frias. She has attended Sulphur Springs schools for five years. Jacqueline is a three-year member of the Sulphur Springs High School Blue Blazes. After high school, Jacqueline plans to attend Paris Junior College to attain her associate's degree and then continue at Texas A&M Commerce for her bachelor's degree in business. Tonight, her escort is her father, Santiago Martinez. Camry Price. Camry is the 17-year-old daughter of Clay and Julie Price. She loves school and has been part of SSISD since kindergarten. Camry is an active member of Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America, High King Club, and is an officer in Key Club. She is also a member of League Street Church of Christ. After graduation, she plans to attend UT Tyler and receive her bachelor's degree in kinesiology and master's degree in occupational therapy. Tonight, her escort is her father, Mr. Clay Price. Sadie Stroud. Sadie is the 17-year-old daughter of Keith and Rory Stroud. She has attended Sulphur Springs schools for 13 years. Sadie is a member of the Sulphur Springs High School varsity volleyball and varsity softball teams and Key Club. She's also involved in Hopkins County Teen Leadership, First Baptist Church Youth Group, and First Baptist Church Youth on Missions. After high school, Sadie plans to attend college and major in missions with the hopes of one day serving in Africa. Tonight, her escort is her father, Mr. Keith Stroud. Stephanie Olguin. <laughs> Stephanie is the 17-year-old daughter of Miguel and Alejandra Cadena. She's attended Sulphur Springs schools for 11 years. Stephanie is a member of FCCLA, Key Club, High King Club, National Society of High School Scholars, and currently works at Marlene Sasson class. She is also involved in health science technology education and was the junior sergeant for Sulphur Springs drill team. Stephanie is also the historian for High King Club. She attends Shannon Oaks Church and is a faithful member of the youth group. After high school, Stephanie plans to attend Texas State University and major in radiation therapy. She plans on becoming a radiation therapist. Tonight, her escort is her father, Mr. Miguel Cadena. These are the 10 young ladies which the senior class of 2019 has nominated for homecoming court. After a vote by the entire student body, two princesses and a queen were chosen.
named 2018-2019 Homecoming Princess is... Madison Clark. Also named 2018-2019 Homecoming Princess is Maddie Ray. And finally, the 2018-2019 homecoming queen for Sulphur Springs High School is Sadie Stroud. Good evening everyone and welcome to Prim Stadium. We've just completed the naming of the homecoming court and I think you heard the announcement as it was made as we went live before uh, uh, they have delayed the uh, homecoming court for a season. Uh, they usually introduce them much earlier in the evening, but uh, they've waited till just before game time for the announcement to be made. We are here at Prim Stadium for homecoming this evening. They're going to be honoring the team of 2008 at halftime, the state championship team. Uh, for Sulphur Springs and then of course uh, the Wildcat game against the Terrell Tigers here this evening at Prim Ladies State. Ladies and gentlemen, we, please join me in once again we, congratulating we each you. of the members of the 2018 We welcome you to this game and we are excited about the opportunity of bringing you the game. We're going to uh, get the uh, announcer, PA announcer a little quieter there. Don Julian is with me to do play-by-play. -play. Doug Haston videotaping this game for replay on Channel 18. I'm Jim Rogers. Butch Barney is with us also. He's going to be assisting us with some statistics and then at halftime Butch is going to be the center of attraction as uh, we talk to him about the first half of play along with the sounds of the Silver Springs High School Band. We will get to hear them here this evening. Don Julian you have a starting lineup for us. Why don't we take a look at those? Uh, certainly we'll do that. Um, did, did they hear the announcement of the Queen and Princesses? I think, I think they so. did, but go ahead and name them again. All right. Uh, princesses were Madison Clark and Maddie Ray and the Queen, Sadie Stroud, a name that we're very familiar with because she is a volleyball and a softball player, one of the only two members of the homecoming uh, nominees that I knew, and uh, so congratulations to her. All right, let's uh, look at the lineups now. We'll start with the Terrell offense, and they will run the flex bone uh, option offense. Uh, their starting quarterback is Micah Skinner. Uh, fullback in that off offense is uh, Jaquavius Morris. 
And uh, a couple of the running backs uh, that they will use is Jaquandus Burns and D.D. George. Wide receivers are Samaj Willis and J.T. Richardson. No, that's not the big bopper. I looked that up, by the way. It's J.P. Richardson was the big bopper uh, killed uh, in the airplane crash with Buddy Holly the day the music died. Uh, the uh, offensive line for Terrell, uh, their left tackle is Tyler Bridges. Left guard is LeBrandon Owens. Uh, the center, 180 pounds, is uh, Justin Arbogast. Uh, the right guard, the real good one there, Malik Griffin. And the right tackle is uh, Yvonne Guzman. So that is uh, uh, Terrell's offense. On the uh, defensive side of the ball for the Wildcats, uh, their uh, defensive tackles are uh, Jose Rodriguez and Evan Rushing. And the nose uh, guard is Ignacio Nacho Guerrero. Inside linebackers, Bryce McQueen and Daniel Marino. And uh, outside linebackers, D.Q. Pitts and uh, Kylan Wade. The uh, cornerbacks, Damian Dugan and uh, Andy Eddins. And uh, safeties are uh, Landry Tyson and also Austin Dodd. So starting defense for the Wildcats. Now let's look at uh, Terrell's uh, defense. And some of these names you will have heard on the offense. They, they're uh, like uh, some of the Wildcat guys. They play both ways. Uh, we'll give you a 3-4 look, but uh, the offense, I mean, I mean the, uh, the uh, well, yeah, the Wildcats offense won't uh, see a clear 3-4 most of the time. They'll be moving people around vigorously, but their nose tackle, their uh, nose guard, their biggest player is Keithian Alexander. Their defensive ends are Brandon Owens and uh, Gary Wiley. Uh, linebackers for Terrell uh, on the outside Cameron Anthony and Jaquandus Burns and inside Jaquavius Morris and also Jose Garcia. Uh, safeties uh, for uh, uh, Terrell, uh, Khalid Johnson, strong safety, and uh, JT Richardson, the free safety. And on the corners uh, have uh, Byron Scott and also Odarius Williams. Wildcats on offense across the uh, line. Left tackle is uh, Philip Rader. Left guard is Giovanni Pisano. Center is Ethan Rogers. The right guard is Jacob Janitis. And the right tackle is Charlie Maddox. Quarterback, DeCorian Young. Running back, uh, Caden Davis. And uh, the slot receivers, Austin Dodd and Chase Haney. And the wide receivers are Landry Tyson and Jace Thompson. So those are the uh, starting lineups uh, for both of these teams. And so far, so good on the weather, I guess, Jimmy. Yes, we are. It's uh, looking well as we uh, looked at the radar a few moments ago, weather kind of going around us and past us. And so I think uh, we're going to be in good shape in that respect. As we look at the uh, temperature here uh, at uh, Prim Stadium this evening, 74 degrees. And uh, a little glance at the radar shows some light rain uh, around our area, but most of the heavy rain to the north, uh, to the northeast and to the northwest. We are expecting the possibility of some thunderstorms in our area, but hopefully those are moving on out at this time. It's going to be an exciting night for football here at uh, Prim Stadium. We've got several uh, district games, of course, going on tonight as uh, all the teams are aligned and ready to uh, start their district play, and it should be an exciting night. We're going to kind of keep up with some of the other teams in our district as the evening goes on and announce some of those uh, pairings as, as we get into uh, the game tonight. As we uh, uh, approach this game, obviously uh, both teams missing last week. I think that may make a difference in, in what uh, they come out with this evening. They didn't have that one last week uh, of, uh, of extra game. As a matter of fact, they've only had one uh, pre-district game, I guess, for both of these teams coming Correcto. into this tonight. And so that's going to make a little bit of difference, I think, in the uh, um, finesse of the game. But uh, we'll see which team survives that lack of a game better. What do you I'll think, Don? I'll tell you what, uh, hungriness uh, to play football uh, has been kind of a theme this week. Uh, uh, I got the impression talking to the coaches that uh, players could not wait uh, for this. You know, you, you, they were all dressed up with no place to go last week and uh, so ended up uh, being canceled out and, and they've just worked all week to try to get back down on that field tonight and I think both teams will really be raring to go and of course a district opener, that always kind of gets you juiced up as well. It certainly does and uh, as we uh, see this, the cheerleaders out on the field as they're preparing for the team to come out, the 
Blue, uh, Blue Blazes in position here as they also are preparing for uh, this this evening. It should be a very exciting time for these teams. We talked about some of the pairings in the district, and uh, let me share those with you. Greenville taking on Corsicana this evening, uh, and they're playing in Corsicana. Uh, Kaufman is at Ennis this evening, and then North Forney taking on Forney, so the uh, battle of the city uh, in Forney, and so it should be interesting to see how that goes. We will try to keep you uh, posted on all of this. And the bleacher creatures getting ready to come out through the uh, Wildcat helmet that's uh, provided by the Booster Club, and here come the bleacher creatures. These. Uh, primary school age kiddos and uh, oh my goodness there's some real big ones out there matter of fact some of them are missing the uh, the course to take <laughs> they're so small they're just excited about running across the field the guy that came out in the lead learned a valuable lesson don't ever turn around and see what's gaining on you because yeah. he kept doing that and eventually they caught him and passed him <laughs> <laughs> just a, just a part of this here at prim stadium as we get ready to start this exciting game uh, congratulations to the homecoming court this evening, all of them for uh, being nominated by their fellow classmates and, uh, and uh, then, of course, to those who won. You know, Jimmy, we have a nine-team district, and I was trying to figure out who you did not uh, mention uh, out of uh, all the teams, and I finally, by a process of elimination, figured that somebody's going to have a bye right. every week, and tonight the bye goes to Roy City, who will play next week. Yes, we'll be in Roy City next week, and then after that, we have the bye. So should be an interesting time uh, for all. Wildcats getting ready to come out. Terrell getting ready to come out as uh, we are preparing for this game to get underway. Yeah, they've both got their helmets uh, going there that they'll be, in the, I think you call those run-throughs, right? I believe that's yes, correct. Yes, and uh, Terrell will be wearing white jerseys, red pants with white stripes, white helmets. Wildcats will be in their home blue. This is a new look, though. They've got the white pants. Looks very they nice. Do. I like it. Yeah, and the Wildcats are coming out. Here they come. This home crowd uh, didn't get to cheer last week, so they'll, they're probably really ready to cut loose here. I have a feeling they are ready to be in. I always like to see who carried the flag, but uh, I haven't been able to determine who that was. It was a big fellow, though. It looked it might have been uh, Jermon Bright Amos would be my guess. It was a a big, he's a big, tall basketball player, and it might have been him, but there were, there were so many players around him, the flag was kind of wrapping him up, too, as he came out. <laughs> yeah, and Terrell getting ready to come out onto the field. A little slow start for us here this evening. It's already three minutes past uh, 7.30, and they're showing seven more minutes left on the clock, so we're going to be a little late getting started here, primarily because of the homecoming activities. Now, this may have been delayed because of some lightning that was going on in our area uh, prior uh, to uh, uh, our uh, start of activities here this evening. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if that had not had some effect on the start of our game tonight. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> well, I hope we don't have any more. That's that's yeah. the uh, issue, I think. Yeah, uh, Coach Owen said, you know, and I think we, we may have had this on, uh, on online anyway in some of the stories, but that uh, we went on a lightning watch last week at like something like 4.45, right. and he finally got the all clear at 10.15. Can you imagine a 10.15 a kickoff if they would have been <laughs> real stubborn and decided to play? Well, if it had been a district game, we probably would have been here, but because it wasn't a district game, we didn't have to do that. Now, they're getting ready for the captains to be in the center of the field, and uh, Terrell just now coming out. But I will tell you, for the Wildcats tonight, captains include number eight, DeCorian Young, number four, Damian, uh, uh, yeah, Damian Dugan, number seven is uh, Jace Thompson, and number 75 for the Wildcats is Charlie Maddox. Those are the captains for the Wildcats this evening. Terrell now in the end zone and uh, taking, taking a knee for uh, probably uh, a time of uh, reflection and prayer and now they're making their way back 
to the sideline. You know, Jimmy, uh, one thing uh, wrapped up in this game, we've talked about homecoming, we've talked about uh, first district game and everything, but also uh, honoring uh, the state championship team from 10 years ago, the 08 uh, football team. And uh, I understand they had a little reception and they're supposed to have a seating area somewhere around here, but I'm not sure where it is. I have a feeling it's going to be on that north side, uh, I mean, uh, excuse me, south side of the field. Uh, That's where it kind of was supposed to be, so I guess just kind of yeah. back there out of the yeah. way uh, behind the fence. Yeah, they, they, this, this, they've shortened the area here and so it doesn't make it conducive. We have a moment of prayer. All right, and so that was our prayer time. And now we're getting ready for, I'm sure, uh, Please remain National standing Anthem. Please remove your hats for our National Anthem. To be and played by the Sulphur Spring High School Band under the direction of Mr. Spencer Emmer. And we'll hear the sound of the High School Band in just a moment. Yeah, that's what I did. the Silver Springs High School Band. We, uh, Doug and I especially, may uh, uh, not have to worry about taking a shower when we get home this evening. We're kind of getting sprinkled on as uh, there's a leak here in our uh, our particular room in the press box. I think they said it was some kind of uh, condensation, but... Uh, it still feels like uh, raindrops. <laughs> it, it still feels like raindrops. <laughs> yes, and and rather large ones at times. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> so here we go. Captain's going out to the center of the field. And uh, we told you the captains for the Wildcats. We'll try to get you captains uh, for Terrell as well. Looks like for Terrell number 22, uh, who is Brian Re Riojas. Uh, Jaquandus Burns, yeah. Yeah, 22. Yeah, the number four out there, that's Micah Skinner. Yeah. And we had uh, the announcer kind of giving us some of those names as well. Uh-oh. Here is the uh, flip, the coin flip. I'm not sure we'll pick up the referees, but uh, it looks like... Wildcats are going to be defending the south goal. The uh, north goal will be defended by Terrell, and Terrell has, uh, will be receiving the ball. So they, I'm sure, won the toss for that. And uh, Wildcats will be kicking off, which is what the Wildcats really like to do anyway. So uh, we'll see how that goes as the game goes on. Another couple of captains uh, were some that good uh, offensive lineman I was talking about, Malik Griffin. And the other captain was LeBrandon Owens. So a couple of their big fellows on the line with the other two captains. Thank you, Don. Thanks for staying with that. Our referee is now going into place, and we should be ready to start shortly. Officials, by the way, are from the Commerce chapter, and, and that should be a common denominator for home games all season long. The Commerce chapter are considered our local chapter, and uh, so they uh, they do the Wildcats games at all levels. Uh, the yeah. head umpire or the head of the officials told me uh, tonight. All right. And as we said, the Wildcats will be kicking off as they uh, await the team to get onto the field. Ref referee standing there with the ball and ready to go. 
Don Julian will be doing your play-by-play -play this evening. Doug Haston videotaping the game for replay on Channel 18. I'm Jim Rogers with us, Butch Bernie. We're delighted that you have joined us this evening here on KSST as we bring you this play-by-play. -play. The ball being set as we prepare for the Jay Hodge kickoff to get this game started. Teeing that ball up uh, for the Wildcats, I believe is Brandon Zavala. That is correct. Uh, they used both of their kickers last week. They snuck uh, OCL Lopez in there as well. But uh, Zavala will uh, have the opening kickoff here. And uh, Terrell has three uh, receivers. We have one receiver right in the middle and two and uh, one to each side of him. But I doubt that, uh, well, I don't know what Coach Owens was going to do. He may decide that uh, right before they kick it off. But here comes Brandon Zavala. And we are underway, and he pooches it to the sideline. Fair catch call for and made at the 28-yard line for the uh, Terrell Tigers. As that was uh, caught over there by uh, Khalid Johnson. And uh, he got those hands up quickly in the air. So first down and 10 for uh, Terrell at their own 28-yard uh, line. And here comes the flex bone. My goodness. Should be an interesting night to watch a different kind of offense being played. And you'll get to see a quarterback of the fans here. We'll get to see a quarterback under center. Micah Skinner, and uh, he uh, hits the up back, and uh, he moves forward to the 30-yard uh, line for a gain of two on the play. Wildcats stack that play up. It'll be uh, second down and eight after, uh, boy, those numbers is very hard to see. Uh, but carrying uh, forward on the first play is uh, Jaquavius Morris, who was their leading uh, ground gainer uh, with 52 yards uh, against Hallsville. Looks like he picked up a couple of yards there. Right, as Lock we in. mentioned, second down and eight Lock on the in. 30. And once again, uh, quarterback under center. And uh, handoff to, no, uh, quarterback keeps uh, and gets very near the first down. That was Micah Skinner. And uh, Skinner uh, on the carry. He had 42 yards uh, against Hallsville, their second leading uh, ground gainer. First down for Terrell at the 38-yard uh, line, and they will try the up back again. Morris breaks a tackle, and he's all the way down to the 40, or up to the 45-yard line. That's a gain of seven on the play. It'll be second down and three for the Terrell Tigers uh, right uh, right there at the 45-yard line. And the rain peppering down here at uh, Wildcat Stadium. The umpire's popping, or excuse me, the umbrella's popping up like those toadstools you've been seeing in your yard. We've got a ton of them uh, at the radio station. My neighbor across the street has some as well. I don't know why I got left out. Count your blessings. And so second down and short now, second down and three for the Terrell Tigers. And Micah Skinner under center. Oop, we had some movement. Looked like one of the, uh, well, no, uh, the timeout was taken. Uh, that, and that player was reacting to that. So Terrell will take a timeout here. We have 10:24 uh, to play here in the first quarter. It's 0-0 here from Gerald Prem Stadium, and we'll take a break back in a moment. I think everybody's trying to hurry up with this rain just a little bit. Well, lower that umbrella a little bit there, Podna. We're about to block my view here. There we go. They sound like they can hear us here. <laughs> Second down and three. Boy, this umbrella just started appearing. I may have to stand up like I do at some basketball and games. And here's the second down and three play. The quarterback uh, keeps, and he's across the 50, across the 45, into the secondary, the 40, the 30, and down the sideline, all the way inside the 10-yard line. A long run by Micah Skinner all the way down to the 10, inside the 10, just about a foot inside. It'll be first and goal for the Terrell Tigers as fake to that up back and then keeping the ball. Big gain, uh, first down and goal from about the nine and a half. That fake really has worked well for the quarterback back. He has done an excellent job of uh, bringing the defensive Wildcats against the man that he supposedly is handing it to and then taking off. And here's Terrell now threatening on their first drive. And Skinner will uh, hand off to the up back and uh, looks like he got a couple of yards. 
Up the well, down to about three, down to a six. So it'll be second and goal from the six-yard line for the Terrell Tigers. You know, the Wildcats stacking the middle of that line as they expect that guy to come running through there. But uh, that's what's costing them on the uh, quarterback keep. Well, you, you heard from uh, all week uh, from the personnel, the way to play option is responsibilities. You've got to stick to your responsibilities and not try to do too much or you, you can have that long run like we saw. Snap back to the quarterback and he's sweeping uh, to the right and uh, he's going to get across the five-yard line and uh, dropped uh, down there. Again, that was Skinner, and that quarterback. Was, and Dodd, Austin Dodd, the man who was first there to bring him down. Third down and goal from the four-yard line. The Wildcats uh, toughening up a little bit, Jimmy, as, that, as uh, Terrell got inside that 10 there. They have to do it at least one more time, and they have to do it a couple of times here, depending on uh, how, what Terrell decides to do if they come up on fourth down here. Here come the Tigers. Third and goal from the four, and Skinner will uh, roll to the right. He's looking to pass. He throws the ball incomplete. It lo looked like uh, the receiver had a shot at it, but right. just could not pull the ball in there and an incompleted pass. And it's going to be fourth down and uh, goal to go from the uh, four-yard line. And this rain falling probably had a little bit to do with not being able to catch that one. I think he was trying to hit Morris out of the backfield. That's his fullback. But uh, yeah, he did not latch on to it. So here's a field goal try. This will be a 21-yard field goal attempt. And oh, the, the snap rolls back. The kick is blocked by the Wildcats. Picked up at the 20, across the 30. The Wildcats are heading toward the goal line, across the 50, across the 40, across the 30. And inside the 20-yard uh, line, down to around the 18, is Dietrich Clayton, who picked that uh, block field goal up and rumbled all the way inside the 20-yard line. And Burns, the man for Terrell, who caught it. No, excuse me, it was not Burns. It was number 32. It was Johnson, the man who caught up with him, Khalid Johnson. And uh, I, as I watched that run, I saw the speed that that young man was showing, and I knew we were in trouble. We probably wouldn't make it, but a great run for the Wildcats and good field position for the Cats as they get ready offensively. Boy, you couldn't ask for anything better to pick that ball up at the 20 and have some time and space. And here are the Wildcats now. Their first drive will start on the uh, 17 of Terrell. And Corian Young, the quarterback, from the shotgun. We'll take the snap. Fakes to the running back. He rolls to the right and throws the ball down the field. Caught yes. touchdown as he hit uh, German Bryant yes. Davis. Or excuse me, Bryant. Amos. Yes. German Bryant Amos for the touchdown. 17-yard TD pass on the Wildcats' very first offensive play. And Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op says way to go Wildcats as the Wildcats get onto the board. That was Amos, who is number 46. Great catch by Amos in the pass from our quarterback. And we have the swinging gate here. They're going to run the gate. It's a snap back. He's uh, heading toward uh, the uh, end zone. No signal yet. They must have stopped him just short of the amount needed. The Wildcats run does not get in there. I think the snap may have uh, come back to Caden Davis, and Davis tried to run it in, but he was stopped probably on the foot line down in there as uh, Terrell uh, stopped that. But the Wildcats do lead by the score of 6 to nothing. We've got 8.07 left here in the first quarter, and we'll take a break and we'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to Prim Stadium where the rain is falling and the Wildcats are scoring. It's six to zero for the Wildcats as they lead Terrell with 8.07 left to go here in the first quarter. Wildcats getting ready to kick the ball to Terrell. Brandon Zavala will do that again the first time he uh, kicked it high down around the 30 yard line. Let's see uh, what the Greg Owens approach is on this kick as Zavala approaches and boots the ball in the same spot again the same result the hand goes up on the fair catch so the receiver was beginning to lose it a little bit went down to the knee to catch it uh, but he had already signaled for a fair catch and he caught it at the 26 yard line and so far so good on uh, the Wildcats uh, kickoffs as, as they've had uh, both won the 28 yard line won the 26 that uh, exceeds expectations uh, uh, I would say yes and I now we see if the Wildcat defense is going to cover those uh, 
uh, options for that quarterback uh, and how well how they're going to respond to this as they come back out. Oh, I bet they had a, a, a frenzied uh, session. Uh, had to be quick because the Wildcats scored in one play. Skinner under center will uh, hand off to the up back, and he's into the secondary. He'll run across the 30 up to around the 33-yard uh, line. That's a gain of eight on, or seven on the play. It'll be uh, second down and three for, the, for uh, Terrell at the uh, their own 33-yard line. And Wildcat defense making that stop. This uh, running game is going to pay off well in this rain, I think. And once again, that was Jaquavius Morris, uh, the up back for Terrell. Now they have just a single back back there, but now a man in motion and, uh, and, and well, a pitch uh, after the quarterback fake to the up back. And the uh, pitch man is having trouble, but he did uh, manage to gain uh, about a yard up to the 34-yard line. Yeah, Wildcats almost had him back in the uh, behind the line of scrimmage, but just could not bring him down. He's got some good balance. Yeah, he made a good run. In fact, they're going to spot it so close, we'll call it the 35, and it's going to be uh, third down now and a long one. They need a yard and about a foot for Terrell here on this uh, third down play. Wildcats would dearly love three and out here, but they're going to have to earn it. And once again, Skinner uh, under center will take the snap and uh, hands off. Uh, no, he fakes and pitches, and it goes for the first down. The pitch man in the secondary breaking tackles across the 50 and all the way down around the 45 in Wildcat territory. And this uh, option offense, which uh, the Wildcats do not see very often, is... Uh, is uh, picking looking up some yards. fairly decent. Yeah, picking up some yards. They bogged down the first time. Here's uh, Skinner. He'll hand off to the up man again. And uh, this is uh, Morris. And Morris is dragging tacklers uh, down to about the 43-yard line. And they will need uh, uh, about uh, seven for the first down. So second down and seven. This the 43. This offense for Terrell working well in the... Uh, middle of the field, uh, but when you get in tight, that's when the Wildcats have really beefed up uh, in that last series. And Skinner has the play now apparently, and he hustles into the huddle, as they do quickly, and then here they come uh, breaking out of there, and again, Skinner under center. And uh, Skinner will hand to the up back, and uh, flag flies as uh, the back uh, moved uh, to about the 41-yard uh, line. That's six yards short of the first down, but hold everything on the flag. Actually, seven yards needed. They marked it back to the 42. Once again, Mary Poppins is in front of me here with the umbrella. And people standing up down here, that's basically the issue. Now, you know, that's a problem that we did not anticipate. Yeah. We, we did not have this problem last year. That's guess, against Terrell. It was a 10-yard uh, penalty for a hold. It, uh, the ball moves down. Tell you what, I'm going to stand up. Ball's at the 48-yard uh, line. And they, they stand, they're standing up, too. They must have stand, stood up on the seat. No, they're standing up down there. He raised the umbrella is what he did. Oh, my goodness. Here's uh, the, the play. It's a pitch uh, to the pitch man across the 50, and he's tackled at the 47-yard uh, line. And that is a long way uh, from the first down marker. Uh, looks like uh, maybe 12 yards needed for the first down, and uh, it's going to be third and 12 from uh, the uh, 47 in Wildcat territory. I think that umbrella has migrated now where I can just sit down again. Although Doug Haston always thinks that I sound better if I stand up. He's told me that before. Encouraging me to stand up. <laughs> and here comes uh, the Terrell Tigers. Big uh, third down play here. And uh, Skinner's back to pass. He sails it uh, over in the flat and incomplete. Skinner did not throw the ball particularly well against Hallsville. I think he had a total of about 27 yards. And uh, he's 0 for 2 in this one, the best I can remember. Now 4th and 12 facing us with 5.19 left to go here in the first quarter facing Terrell. And they do have a uh, 
a situation which you would anticipate a punt there on uh, the Wildcats 47 yard line. Corsicana 13, Greenville 7 in their game at Corsicana. And they have a, in effect, a, yeah, now they're going back into the punt formation. And it's a high snap, and the kick is away, and it's a kind of a short kick, but it will uh, head to the sideline, and it's going to be marked out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line for the Wildcats. And so fair field position at around the 24-yard line, first down and 10 for the Wildcats at their own uh, 24, forcing Terrell to punt. And, of course, they were hampered by a holding penalty. Wildcats out and ready to go. 5.09 left in the first quarter. Wildcats leading 6 to nothing, And uh, DeCorian Young, who's ran one play so far, and he scored a touchdown on it. Trip receivers out to the right side. Let's see what he's got uh, on his mind this time. He will uh, hand off, and uh, uh, Davis, uh, the running back, uh, oh, continues to run. He breaks tackles and moves all the way up near the 40-yard line to the 39. So he got the first down plus an additional uh, five yards for the Wildcats. And Silver Springs Jeep Chrysler Dodge says it's first down. And that was number two. Yes, Caden Davis. Caden Davis, as we mentioned. And Corian Young again from the shotgun. Two receivers left and right. Davis just to his right. And uh, Young throwing out there. The pass is completed across the 40, the 45 yard line. And over there to, I believe, Damian Dugan on the reception. No, excuse me, Jace Thompson was the receiver out on the right side. A pass completed for five yards up to the 45-yard. Actually, it's closer to six. Let's call it second down and a long four for the Wildcats at the 45-yard line in their own end of the field. And to Corey and Young again from the shotgun. I think he cast a quick glance down to that wristband. And takes a snap and will hand off to Davis, sweeping to the right. Davis uh, has the first down across the 50, and it's going to be knocked out of bounds at the 47-yard line in Terrell territory. So first down and 10 for the Wildcats. Uh, with four minutes left here in the first quarter, Wildcats leading 6-0. And that Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep first down came as uh, Davis drug out of bounds by a shirt tail, actually. So he's a, yeah. a good start with a couple of good runs. Of course, yeah. had 114 official yards last week, according to Wildcats coaches. In their official stats, they send along to Max Preps. To Corey and Young from the shotgun takes the snap, uh, fakes and throws. Uh, oh, there's nice. Jamon Bryant, Amos again with another catch. That's going to turn into a combo that may just get better and better. Uh, they look pretty good in the first game, but a one-handed catch by that basketball player, and he's all the way down to the 25-yard line. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. And that Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep came on a one-handed catch by Jamal Amos. With a Bryant stuck in the middle there. There I Bryant, yeah. And uh, once again, to Corey and Young uh, from the shotgun. Waiting on the snap. Kind of a long count this time. Takes the uh, snap. Here's a handoff, and this will be uh, Colton Allen across the 20 uh, down to the 19-yard uh, line. That's a six-yard run for Colton on his first carry in the ball game. Second down and four for the Wildcats at uh, the Terrell 19-yard line. And Rogers going up against that huge nose tackle that's just right up in his face. Rogers, the center for the Wildcats, not related, uh, but doing an excellent job of protection there. Yeah, that 14-year-old 320-pounder uh, down there at the nose guard position for Terrell. And Corian Young will take the snap, throws the ball out. It's caught by Dugan. He's across the 20 and down to the 15-yard line, very close. Uh, they're going to move it back just a little. Should be short, uh, I believe, just a little bit uh, for the first down, maybe a yard to go. Third down and one for the Wildcats at the Terrell uh, 16. Rain still falling here at, Wild at uh, Prim Stadium, 228 to go. Trip receivers out to the right side, single receiver to the left for the Wildcats. Oh, somebody got a head start, and now DeCorey and Young will throw it uh, down the field toward Landry Tyson, but that play got blown dead. 
as uh, looked like one of the Terrell players offside as he he burst through there. When you get a head start, you can do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, I think he was through before the count had ended. <laughs> I think they'll mark that five off. That'll be first down and ten for the Wildcats at the eleven. And that sets up a first down by penalty there right. for the Wildcats. Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep says take that first down any way you can. And they uh, can make a first down without a touchdown. The ball at the 11. So it's first and 10 from the 11. And Corian Young looking like a real leader, just like he has uh, uh, all spring and summer. He's taking on that mantle of leadership. We'll take the snap, and uh, oh, he hands off Colton Allen, and that maybe that wet turf there as Allen planted that foot, and it just uh, gave out uh, from under him there at the 14. Let's see, yeah, they'll mark it at the 14. That's a loss of three. Second down and uh, 13 uh, needed for the Wildcats at the Terrell 14. Landry Tyson is uh, off to the left side. Couple of receivers off to the right. And uh, Jermon Bryant Amos is worth watching. He's in the B-back position off to the right side behind the right tackle. Fake. And now DeCorian Young rolling. He passes. It's caught by Jermon Bryant Amos. But this time the Terrell defender said, I'm going to watch that big guy. Oh, they're going to say incomplete pass. I guess he could just not hold on to it there as he was thrown to the ground. So an incomplete pass. That will move it back to the 14. That would have only gained uh, probably back to around the original line of scrimmage anyway had he held on. On, but right. now it's going to be uh, third down and uh, needing uh, 13 yards for the Wildcats at the uh, Terrell 14-yard line. And Corian Young, let's see him take off here. That'd be my call. But I'll let Matt Young call the play. And uh, Young will now throw the ball over the middle. Oh, a two a hot uh, for the receiver. Tried to get it into Austin Dodd. And uh, too hot uh, went, uh, and it was a high throw, too. And so it's field goal time, and they're going to bring in Brandon Zavala. will try the first Wildcat field goal uh, attempt, unless I forgot uh, from two weeks ago that they might have done one, but I don't remember. I don't think so. So here's Brandon Zavala, and it will be a 31-yard uh, field goal attempt. Let's see how Zavala does. The ball is down. The kick on oh, the way nice. looks pretty good as it spins toward the uprights. And the kick is good for the Wildcats. Good field goal by Brandon Zavala. 31-yard kick. 103 left here in the first quarter. New score here from Gerald Prim Stadium. The Wildcats of Sulphur Springs 9 and the Terrell Tigers 0. We'll take a break and we'll be back in a moment. Nine for the Cats, zero for Terrell, 103 left in the first quarter, and the Cats are kicking. Here's Brandon Zavala, the third uh, kick of the first quarter. It's heading for the same place, but a up receiver or a receiver further down the field across the 20 breaks tackles, but then uh, tackled at the 29 yard line. So they kicked that one a little bit deeper, and it went beyond that guy that's been catching him around the 30 down to the 20 yard line. And Terrell will have first down and 10 from their own 29. So they've had the 28, the 26, and the 29-yard line for starters. That's pretty good. Yeah. That yeah. is pretty good uh, for a defense to start with that kind of uh, look uh, at the offense. Certainly very consistent. And uh, under center, Micah Skinner played some quarterback last year. He will pitch uh, the, the pitch on the option, and the Wildcats make the tackle as the runner comes across the 31, a gain of only two yards on the play, and the receiver is uh, slow getting up there as he is on uh, hands and knees with a helmet just came flopping off. Yeah, so we have a timeout. We uh, have a timeout for an injured player. 42 seconds uh, left to go here in the first quarter. Wildcats 9, Terrell 0. Back in a moment. We are at Prim Stadium, 42 seconds left in the first quarter. Wildcats lead 9-0. to zero. The injured Terrell player off the field now, and Terrell getting ready to run their next play. That was D.D. George uh, was the player that took the pitch, and uh, he pretty much walked off 
under his own power there. Second down and eight now for Terrell at their own 31-yard line. They trail nine to nothing, and uh, Skinner will uh, hand off to a second option, and he will get the first down. The ball is loose, and the Wildcats pick it up, and they're running back the other way. Inside the 30, dragging tacklers along. The pile keeps moving, and the mass. Oh, look at that receiver. That guy run. Unbelievable. Down to the 10-yard line. What an incredible run. And that was uh, Austin, Austin Dodd. Dodd. Yeah, Austin Dodd, the man who got that ball and brought it on down. And uh, Wildcats have a first down at the 10. You know, Dodd had an interception uh, last week, so he's uh, had uh, picked up a couple of turnovers this young season. Certainly a candidate for player of the game. I'll tell you what, you want to see Doug's, uh, Doug, uh, I'm not going to put you on the spot. I hope you got a great shot of that. But that's the most determined run I, I, I may have ever seen a Wildcat make. I mean, he just drug the pile, looked like, for 40 yards. First down and uh, uh, 10, uh, right outside the 10-yard line for the Wildcats, DeCorey and Young, the quarterback, saying, man, you sure aren't letting us drive much. And here's a handoff, uh, Caden Davis, and he's bottled up right at the line of scrimmage. May have lost about half a yard back to the 11. So second down and a long 10 for the Wildcats at the 11-yard line. As we go to the quarter. That's the end of the first quarter here from Gerald Prim Stadium. And uh, the Wildcats are leading Terrell by the score of 9 to nothing. And we'll be back with the start of the second quarter right after this break. We are ready to start the second quarter of play as Terrell comes back onto the field. The Wildcats are getting their final instructions from the coaches. Nine for the Wildcats, zero for Terrell as we come to the beginning of this second quarter here. And uh, Wildcats with the ball and in good field position uh, from their 10-yard uh, line, it looks like. Corsicana 19, Greenville 7, hmm. Kaufman 14, Ennis 0 in oh, their game. Oh, my goodness. So that's an interesting score. It certainly is, Jimmy. So second down and uh, about 10 from about the 10. The Wildcats can get, well, no, I take that back. Uh, it looks like uh, they've uh, got second and goal from the 10. Back here to DeCorian Young. He's rushed. He throws a screen pass. The ball is caught, and the uh, ball carrier is going to be dropped. That was Dugan on the screen, and he was dropped at the 13-yard line. So a screen pass that loses uh, three yards on that one. And I had complimented Coach Young because his screen game did not look like uh, the screens of the past. That looked like the screen of the past. Yes. And unfortunately, that state team could say, oh, man, I remember how to run those. We could, we could show them. <laughs> yeah. But we've had a difficult time running that kind of screen uh, uh, in recent years. Back to DeCorian Young. He's got time in the pocket. He throws out to the right side. The ball is caught down there. Dugan uh, breaks a tackle. He's across the five, running toward the end zone. He's all the way down. Touchdown, Wildcats! As uh, Damian Dugan got all the way to the end zone, another very determined run for the Wildcats. And Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op says, way to go, Wildcats, as the Cats score. 15 for the Cats, 0 for Terrell with 11-11 to go here in this second quarter. So, uh, let's see, uh, trying to remember the 13-yard touchdown pass there from Dugan. And now again, the swinging gate is set up. The Wildcats leading 15 to nothing. And they're going to just uh, check out of that. And Zavala comes uh, racing onto the field for the extra point. You better hurry. They have, the clock is ticking down to five. Yeah, this, this is a, probably a new rule here. They're not going to make it. Yeah, they, they get did. to get the snap. Here's a kick and oh, hit and the, the crossbar. And so the kick is no good. It was very rushed. I, I don't even yep. surprised they didn't even pick up a flag there as they were really trying to rush. Uh, maybe that, that we may have seen the remnants of that 40-second clock uh, right there after the score. And uh, yeah, that's it. looks like Coach Owens is talking to the official in the white hat, trying to determine... Uh, uh, anyway, getting some information on that. But the kick did hit the crossbar. was no good. Uh, Brandon Zavala on the kick. But it was, it was a rush job all the way around. So 11-11 left here in the second quarter. New score here from Gerald Prim Stadium. The Wildcats of Sulphur Springs 15 and Terrell 0. We'll take a break back in a moment. 
We are at Prim Stadium, 11 minutes, 11 seconds left to go in the second quarter of play. 15 for the Wildcats, zero for Terrell, and the rain continues to pepper down, and I think it's falling just a little harder than it was earlier. So uh, the rain um, is, is sort of a factor. Obviously, with turf, it's not quite the factor it is on a, on a grass surface, but uh, the rain still can make a difference. And uh, it can rain, 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 but uh, the big L word is the one you don't want to hear. That's what uh, people were talking last week, and I said, don't worry about rain. you got to worry about the L word. I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're pretty safe from that right now. Yeah, this is a soft rain, the California rain, I call it, because I think I heard thunder one time when I was out there. They just it does not have to accom accommodate every rain like it does here in Texas. Here's a uh, kickoff for the Wildcats and uh, sends it down to the 15-yard line. Return man across the 20 to the 25, breaks a tackle and uh, is hit real hard and finally dropped it around the 35-yard line. First down and 10 uh, for Terrell at uh, their own 35-yard line. Pretty darn good uh, return there on uh, Brandon Zavala's kick. Yes, it was, and uh, this is the best field position that they've had on a kick. There, is there a flag on the plate? There is a flag down there. Okay. Getting an explanation. Yeah, and it's against Terrell. Probably a, oh, something on the run back, I guess, and here the officials are moving the ball back, uh, all the way back, the major penalty here, all the way back to the 20-yard line. I say major. It Block in the back. Block in the back. Oh, okay, yeah. Somebody said, if you can see that number on the back, do not block. But somebody on Terrell did, and so now they have the ball at the 20-yard line in their own end of the field, trailing 15 to nothing with 11.05 left here in the second quarter. And Skinner, the quarterback, and uh, hands off to the up back, and uh, he has met uh, uh, with some Wildcats playing vigorous defense there, and they stop the uh, ball carrier at the 22, gain a two on the play. Second down and eight for Terrell at their own 22-yard line. Good job of that Wildcat defense swarming in there. Uh, several Wildcats on that tackle. Yeah, and you could you love that when you see a hit and and the, you can see the ball carrier almost uh, either being straightened up or moved around. He's really getting tattooed down there, and Wildcats were doing some tattooing on that one. So here is a second down and eight now from the 22-yard line, and Micah Skinner, the senior. One of only 15 uh, for Terrell, and uh, he was back to pass, and he flings it down the field, and, oh, that was way off target, and receiver and quarterback not on the same page on that one. He may have just been kind of unloading it to a, an area of the field to... Uh, yeah, they, they certainly don't uh, design a play for the pass to go to the head coach, and that's where it was headed. I was just uh, even wondering if uh, they might uh, have ruled some kind of uh, grounding on the play, but uh, that's why I kind of hesitated there, but uh, not the case. And so it's going to be third down and eight now from the 22-yard uh, line for the Terrell Tigers, and this would be a great place for the Wildcats defense to uh, turn, um, make them uh, give up the ball on another punt here on a three and out. And once again, Skinner is back to pass. He uh, throws the ball out to the right and is uh, caught out there and then moved for the first down uh, across the 30-yard uh, line up uh, to around the uh, 31. First down and 10 for Terrell on a completed pass, and that looked like a pretty good pass and catch there for Terrell. Yes. we have. That's the first one we've seen that had a lot of uh, timing to it and, and looked like a really, really good pass play out there. So first down and 10 for the uh, Terrell Tigers as they overcame that uh, third down and eight with uh, completion. And they're up at their own 31, first down and 10. And once again, Skinner under center. Looked like some movement on the offensive line and uh, flags fly, whistles blow. And so we Illegal. shall see. Illegal. Illegal procedure? Yes, that was the call. Yeah, a clear movement uh, on that right side of the line. It'll cost them five, back to the 26. So first down and 15 for Terrell. Back at their own 26-yard line. Wildcats leading 15 to nothing. We have 9.35, and the clock is rolling as we play here in the second quarter. And Micah Skinner back under center. We'll take the snap. Uh, hands off to the second option, and he's into the secondary, and he's he may go as Terrell uh, running back is at the 20 to the 10. Touchdown, Terrell. Oh, my, 74-yard run for the Terrell Tigers. And a real good 
uh, work on that uh, offensive by Terrell. They cleared out a nice hole for that young man in that second option uh, handoff, and he just took it to the house. I believe, Butch, that was number 88, uh, D.D. George. Butch says that is correct. George, the player that was shook, uh, shaken up uh, earlier in the ball game, but he didn't look uh, shook that time. He <laughs> looked stirred and not shaken. Here's the extra point. The ball is down. The kick uh, for Terrell, and the kick is good. Uh, kicking the extra point for Terrell was Brian Riojas. And so the kick is good. 9-13. Boy, that... Uh, wasn't that what we – well, I guess we said that uh, – no. I, I don't think the clock rolled uh, yeah, on that touchdown did. run. It did. It did. Okay. Yeah. 9-13 left uh, here in the second quarter. New score here from Gerald Prem Stadium. The Wildcats of Sulphur Springs 15 and Terrell 7. Let's take a break. Back in a moment. 9-13. 9-13 left to go in the second quarter of play. Wildcats 15. Terrell on the board with 7. Terrell will be kicking the ball to the Wildcats as we go back to play here. The rain continues to fall at Prim Stadium. Our booth continues to leak. And uh, at this point in time, we've got a 19-7 game. Corsicana leading Greenville. Uh, Kaufman 14 in a 7. Forney and Forney, nobody has scored. They're in a delay in Forney. Hmm. I wonder if they got some of that. Yeah, they got what? some of that stuff. <laughs> some of the stuff that was south of us has gone to Forney. Mm. Okay. Yeah, Kaufman expected uh, to be one of the, by the experts, uh, one of the so-called top four playoff teams. And, boy, they're making their case. Ennis has really struggled. Here's uh, the uh, short kick or Terrell, a fair catch call for and made by the Wildcats at their own 38-yard line. And uh, so uh, six. that is uh, caught there by Chase Haney. Well, I, hear, I heard a lot of good stuff about him because uh, he's uh, basically on some uh, squads that are almost senior laden of receivers and uh, defensive backs. And that guy is uh, making his case for playing time because he's been playing so well. Certainly good hands. And, yeah, did a good job there. And so first down and 10 for the Wildcats at their own 38-yard uh, line. And Corey and Young uh, back in the shotgun for the Wildcats with an eight-point lead. Fake to the running back. Pass is caught, uh, and it's uh, Dodd across the 40 and still running. Uh, that determined run. Uh, he's very close to the first down. Jimmy has mentioned the flag, and uh, looked like Dodd had rumble for the first down, but we've got to, got to hold everything for that uh, flag. And we'll, we'll see what the call is here. I think we can pick it up maybe. Offense, number 16, first down. Okay, nothing like getting your number called in front of your <laughs> friends and family. <laughs> and in high school ball, usually you don't do that. Well, actually, there I think they've changed the rules. Yeah. Uh, they used to not do that. Big, uh, big penalty on the Wildcats. It mm -hmm. uh, erases the first down and uh, moves the ball back to the 31-yard uh, line. The Wildcats need 17 now for the first down. First down and 17. They're on their own 31-yard line. So uh, DeCorian, uh, we have a few more yards to get here, but has three downs to do it. Back in the shotgun, will uh, oh a low snap picks it up. Now he rolls out uh, to the right, looking down the field. The pass is caught, uh, and uh, Wildcat uh, moving down the field. That is Bryce McQueen, who also plays an inside linebacker position, but he's playing a receiver that time, and uh, moved the ball up to the 38-yard line, and so about 10 needed for the first down. Back to about the original line of scrimmage. Second down and 10 for the Wildcats at uh, their own uh, 38. Bryce McQueen with a catch. And once again, DeCorian back in the shotgun. Looking for a little bit uh, better snap this time. And he got a good one. And he will hand off to Colton Allen across the 40. Allen uh, breaking some tackles. Oh, what a surge. And he surged for the first down, went across the 50 to the 49-yard line. A good job of Colton Allen of running backwards that time and backpedaling and gaining yards. And Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep first down with 8.20 left to go in the second quarter. A ball first and 10 at the Terrell 49-yard line. Wildcats in possession back to DeCorian Young. He's looking right, deep. He throws the ball down the field toward Jace Thompson, and Thompson could not latch on. There's a flag down on the far side. That was a free play. 
Yeah, there was a lot of, uh, I call it rooster fighting going on down there. But uh, incomplete. I thought that Thompson maybe had a chance to uh, break free from that and, and catch up to it, but offside Terrell. Okay, so no uh, interference apparently on the play then. So first down and five as uh, that will advance the ball up uh, to the 44-yard uh, line in Terrell territory. And it'll be first down and five for the Wildcats. An offensive uh, coordinator's uh, favorite dream, first and five. You can do so much here because you are already got five yards in the bank and it's just now first down. DeCorey and Young from the shotgun. Waiting for that snap. Long count again. And now takes a snap. And he will hand off Colton Allen across the 40 to the 35. Allen to the 30. 25, 20. Colton Allen, they finally jumped on his back around the 15-yard line and, and tackled him down there around the 15. A nice run for Colton Allen. I thought he might uh, be able to sneak it in the end zone. But the Terrell defense, uh, they've been compared a lot by Coach Young to uh, Paris. And with that speed that closes the gap. And now here's a quick play, and a handoff uh, running back, and I think, uh, I believe that's a new ball carrier. Right. That is DeCorian Chalk Sims. Yeah. And Sims uh, on the carry as uh, he will move the ball down uh, around the 10-yard uh, line. It'll be uh, second down and uh, about five, and here's a handoff Sims again, and this time he lost his uh, footing, and uh, He's uh, stopped actually right at the 10-yard line, so it'll be third down and five now for the Wildcats at the 10-yard uh, line. Chalk has been battling some injuries, and uh, and uh, Coach o and uh, Coach Young, when I talked to him earlier this week, rubbed those hands together, and he said, I think I'm going to get Chalk back this week, and he's got him back. He's a load, he's a, but uh, not as much a load as he used to be. He had a great edge and really got into condition, game condition. There's a snap uh, to a different quarterback, and and it's uh, going to run it up there. That looked like uh, Aiden Walker, the quarterback. The play moved uh, down around the six. It was Walker on that play as he's trying to edge up to he's just a four shy. Yeah. So this is uh, looks like fourth and very, very short. Once again, uh, Aiden Walker is uh, back in the Wildcat package, and he will keep the ball at a big quarterback, and uh, he may have gotten enough for the first down. He's very close down around that five-yard line, Let's which is the yard to gain. Terrell is pointing, saying, we held. They probably will measure this one, I think, maybe. Well, they could certainly do that. It, is, it looks like a very, very close play. It's right down on that five-yard line. Let's see what he says. Nope, they're going to measure. And so they'll bring the chains in, and they'll have to make a, a fairly decent trip. They'll have to go a little bit past the hash mark, the second hash mark, as they come in for the... This is a big measurement because it's either going to be Terrell holding uh, and having first down in... Uh, 10 from the 5 or the Wildcats continuing this drive for points here. And they stretch that chain. And oh my, that looked like it had a little kink that they got out of it. And that might have made the difference. First down for the Wildcats. Oh my, Silver. that was a very close measurement. Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler G first down for the Cats. 626 left to go in the second quarter of play. 15 for the Cats, 7 for Terrell. In first down and goal for the Wildcats at the five-yard line. So how about that uh, cameo by Aiden Walker coming in there and running a couple of uh, real uh, t tough plays for the Wildcats that they really, really needed. DeCorian Young now uh, back in from the shotgun. First and goal and scoreboard says uh, the four-yard line. And here's a uh, uh, fake and uh, Young will keep. He races toward the uh, end zone and uh, he dives there. Touchdown. And touchdown for the Wildcats. I'll take your word for it. I haven't seen the indication, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, Jimmy yeah. said touchdown. And uh, the Wildcats uh, get on the board on a DeCorian Young touchdown, and that's his uh, third of the season. And Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op says way to go Wildcats as Young got near that end zone and just kind of dived in for that touchdown down in the corner uh, on uh, this near side. So Wildcats scoring with 5.59 left to go in the quarter. And extra point time. Jace Thompson is the holder for the Wildcats. Puts the snap down the, and the kick on the way. It's good. And uh, the kick is good. And uh, that, uh, again, was Brandon Zavala on the kick. I wanted to make sure. They, they, wouldn't you know they would give the kickers 25 and 26 
No confusion there, folks, but uh, anyway, that was Zavala on the extra point. 5.59 left here in the second quarter. New score here from Gerald Prim Stadium. The Wildcats of uh, Sulphur Springs 22 and uh, Terrell 7. We'll take a break back in a moment. Prim Stadium, rain falling, 5.53 left to go in the first half of play. 22 for the Wildcats, 7 for Terrell, and the Wildcats will be sending the ball down to Terrell. And this time, OCL Lopez will be kicking the ball for the Wildcats, 25 instead of 26. <laughs> so Lopez now with the kick, and let's see how uh, he performs. He did kick uh, during the Wildcats scrimmage, got one extra point last week, a short kick, and it uh, is going to be taken on the fair catch by uh, Terrell, as made there by Odarius Williams. And the ball will be marked at the 36-yard line. Not a bad job there by Lopez. Uh, anytime you can get a fair catch and over in that flat area, and it's the 36-yard line, first down and 10 for Terrell in their own territory. Here comes a red and white. That kind of remind me maybe of Nebraska, kind of a Nebraska look. Well, the Wildcats need to be looking for that second option and uh, shutting that down. That's yeah, that's, that's been a productive play. And here is uh, Skinner, and he uh, fakes uh, to the up back. Here's a pitch and big play and uh, uh, running for a first down all the way up to the 50-yard line. Again, everybody was killing that first back that got the ball, but uh, the second guy on the pitch all the way down to the 49-yard line, first down and 10 for Terrell. And, and boy, man, I'm telling you, when you play an offense once <laughs> yeah. a season, it's really hard to prepare for. Greenway caught up with him and grabbed the shirt, slowed him down enough for the Wildcats to come up, the rest of the Wildcats to come up and help. Greenway was uh, among the tackle and assist leaders uh, last week from his inside linebacker position. And here's, a, oh, a handoff to a, a kind of a draw play as the quarterback was uh, heading back and uh, that player slipped or got yep. tackled, all of the above. Yeah, a little bit all. And that was uh, Jaquavius Morris, I believe, on the carry and uh, a loss back to the 46. It's a loss of three. It'll be a second down and 13 for Terrell at their own 46-yard line. And DQ Pitts, the man that kind of covered him up there. Oh, yeah, that, that's a smart guy. Hey, I'll pick up a, a tackle. <laughs> The easy way. Way to go, DQ. Here's a handoff to the up back, and he's uh, straight forward for some pretty good yardage. He got the lost yards and uh, uh, down to the 49-yard uh, line. His uh, carry was Cameron Anthony. And uh, down, uh, we're going to mark the ball at the uh, 48. And so seven yards needed for the first down for Terrell. Third and seven coming up. Another big third down play. Austin Dodd, the man getting up last off of that play. He was man under him. Yeah, those are such quick openers that uh, you can, you know, get uh, some pretty good yards sometime before contact. Skinner again under center here. And, oh, the ball's down on the ground, and uh, the Wildcats, Wildcats may have it. Got it. Looked like the – and, oh, it's Not loose. Close. It's uh, squirting around. There's no telling. Even some Terrell player dived in there at the last minute. The officials uh, pulling everybody apart here. Looks like Terrell got it back. Okay. Okay. Uh, they certainly did, and uh, yeah, Greenway was the first one to it, but it just squirted out of his hands as well, and Terrell able to get it. I'm not sure if it was him or not, but the last guy, the center, was the one uh, on the last man off that uh, pile, yeah. and uh, so Terrell, they'll lose big yardage, and they'll have fourth down and uh, 14 because that squirted backwards and uh, to the 45-yard uh, line, but they did maintain possession, and they'll kick it away, and Austin Dodd is back in. Uh, as a uh, punt returner around his own 30-yard line. Snap is back for Terrell. Oh, he's going to run and uh, going to throw a pass, but it's going to not even get back to the original line of scrimmage. I don't think complete. it was even caught. Yeah, yeah, Jimmy makes a good point because the Wildcats were scrambling around trying to pick up the football. So ball goes over on downs, and the Wildcats will get it at the Terrell 45-yard line after a fake punt. Well, actually, the Wildcat got in there. I don't think he could have punted it if he'd have tried because so you of the Wildcat right in his face. Rather than the designed uh, play yeah. that it was out, out of necessity, but I'm telling you, they've been studying their hot reads to what to happen in that situation because the, the receiver and uh, the uh, punter seem to be on the same page. So they may be excellent students of what to do when a play blows up. 
First down and 10 for the Wildcats at the 45-yard uh, line, and here's a handoff to uh, Caden Davis. Davis uh, forward for three yards up to the 42-yard uh, line in Terrell's end of the field. So it'll be second down and seven for the Wildcats at uh, the Terrell 42-yard line. Three-yard gain for Caden Davis. Two receivers out to the left, two out to the right. And Davis back behind uh, DeCorey and Young this time. Kind of an eye look. And there's a snap back to DeCorian. He's waving somebody Whoops. down the field, rolling uh, to the left, and he'll throw that one uh, to the guy holding the down marker on the sideline. He was wide open, by the way, but incomplete, and it'll be a third down and seven for the Wildcats. But that's a smart play because you don't want to try to force something in there, and you uh, throw an incompletion and live to, to fight another day here for another down on third and seven at the 42 and Terrell's uh, end of the field. 3.03 to go in the first half of play. Wildcats leading 22 to seven. And DeCorian from the shotgun takes a snap. He's oh, getting a big everybody. rush, but it's a screen incomplete. Oh, that that was kind of a good idea, but just uh, not executed very well. And then in all defense of DeCorian, he did not have a lot of time. They were heating him up with about <laughs> seven guys that uh, looked like they were going after a chicken fried steak back there. They were they were on the move. It's fourth down and seven for the Wildcats. Punting time for Jermon Bryant Amos. I'd like to see him take off that big, big fella. I'll tell you what, if they're not paying a lot of attention and just uh, firing back to cover, the Wildcats may see that. They may try something like that. A one hopper to uh, Bryant Amos, and he puts the foot into it. It went off to the side. Yeah, it's going to be uh, out of bounds. So let's see. They're going to mark it uh, at the 21-yard line. So that's only a 19-yard kick. And he didn't quite get it inside the 20, which is always one of those landmarks. He punted twice last week, both of them inside right. the 20-yard line. And so... Um, he, he, his average may have suffered a little bit, but he got great results. And that one, all things considered, not totally terrible, but just an, a 19-yard kick, and maybe with a wet field and everything, maybe just slipped off the side of the foot. But a very strong leg. He punishes that ball when I've seen him punt in practice. First down and 10 from the 21-yard line, and uh, Skinner hands off to the up back. He had a wildcat on his back just from the get-go, and. Uh, running back up uh, to around the 24-yard uh, line. Gain of three, second down and seven. And up, Terrell at uh, their own 24-yard line. We have 2.30 left uh, here in the second quarter. So Terrell with the clock on their back a little bit here with this uh, kind of a Although they did go 74 a while ago. And then we had some movement in there and some contact. Some Wildcat slapping his hands together. And doggone it. All sides. Defense. Down remains two. Well, that'll uh, cost the Wildcats five yards up to the 29-yard uh, line. Be second down and just about two needed. A long two yards. Forney and North Forney underway. North Forney leads 7-0 to zero there in the first quarter there. Of course, the Canada scored 33 points in the first quarter. They're leading Greenville 33-7. Yeah, they're the real deal in the district, uh, one of them. And uh, here's uh, Skinner handing off to the up back, and he's straightforward, uh, has the first down across the 35 up to around the 38-yard line. That stops the clock temporarily at two minutes, but they've already uh, uh, wound it up there as uh, Terrell again uh, under two minutes here to try to get something going. So well, here's first and ten, and uh, here's a pitch on the option play to the right. It looks well defended by the Wildcats, there, but the runner trying to gain by running across the field, and he's losing massive yardage, and now ball flag ball. goes down, and the ball ends up on the turf, but Terrell I believe got the recovery. There are players uh, flopping all over the field. It, nothing is a clean recovery tonight. It seems like the ball is squirting around like the pig at the, the grease pig at the state fair. But that was a huge loss as that player was trying to gain yardage all the way back to the 22 yard line. And they'll need the 48. So they need 26 yards. 
for the uh, first down. There was a flag. Yeah, they were discussing it down here, and we declined it. All right, and why wouldn't you? On the offense, number 88, penalty is declined. Third down. All right, first down, and uh, what did we say? Or second down now, and there we go, 26. Thank you, scoreboard. I'd calculated that, but a long way to go here. It's actually third down and 26. Yeah, no need to take a, a penalty there of the guy that was trying to make up some yardage and ran from one side of the field to the other and, and also backwards. And the Wildcats had that pitch well defended. Uh, and now was, we call timeout. Timeout. And time, timeout <laughs> taken by the Wildcats. Uh, 102 uh, left. Uh, the Wildcats want to do something with that football. They can get it back here. Uh, Wildcats leading 22 to 7 with 102 left here in the second quarter. We'll take a break back in a moment. One minute, two seconds to go in the first half of play. 22 for the Wildcats, 7 for Terrell. Coach Owens was really upset that they didn't get that clock stopped a little earlier. You may have heard him yelling, stop the clock. And here is uh, Terrell now in a long play. There's a pitch, and they, oh, into the secondary, and he's going to run uh, close. A first down, oh, my. A third down and 26 play, and the guy made about 30 yards all the way across the 50, right at the 50-yard line. First down and 10. And now it looks uh, pretty good that the uh, team took so long to stop that clock. 53 seconds uh, left. Clock is now rolling again under 50. Here's a naked backfield and a shotgun down the field. It goes incomplete. And there's and a, a flag, flag for flies. interference. I think he had the hand on the on the uh, receiver as he was breaking it up with the other hand. Uh, they're going to yep. flag uh, Jace Thompson there. That Here's the call. That's a 10 for number six for the Tigers. Incomplete, broken up by number seven. Pass interference, defense number seven. 15 yards, automatic first down. And Kevin Woolley told us, uh, it's, I thought he said number six. They do not have a six on this no, roster. Seven. Oh, seven. No, no, no. I, I'm talking oh. about them. Oh. Yeah, I know Jace's number. He's seven. But it is uh, first down and ten for uh, Terrell on the pass interference. Uh, officials now making sure that ball gets uh, properly marked. And again, these uh, fellas, uh, given that they're all out there in the stripes or from the commerce uh, chapter, our local chapter, uh, officials. They move the ball to the 40-yard line, first down and 10 for Terrell. There are 44 seconds, uh, all that's left here in the second quarter. And uh, once again, Skinner is back in the shotgun here with two receivers left and right. And uh, so Skinner back to pass. He'll shoot the ball down the field, and the ball is uh, out of bounds. Incomplete. Get an all-out effort to try to catch that when the receiver's uh, helmet flew off. So an uh, incomplete pass, second down and 10 from uh, the 40-yard line. And the clock now at 38 seconds. As Terrell trying to play beat the clock here as they're down 22-7. And once again, Skinner. Three receivers left, two to the right. We'll take the snap. He's looking down the field, throws oh, incomplete. Almost. And that time, Jace Thompson jumped the route on the receiver and uh, had the ball kind of sail through his hands. It was intended for Nate Lloyd. And uh, Jace uh, had a pretty good shot at it, but that thing was whistling. It uh, had a lot of mustard on it. Third down and 10 for Terrell at, their, uh, at the Wildcat 40-yard line. Just 34 seconds uh, remaining here in the second quarter as uh, Terrell faces a big third and ten. <laughs> it may go back into that uh, flex bone, and uh, yes, and here they go. Watch out for the last time they gained 30 yards when they needed 26. There's a pitch, and the ball is on the ground. Uh, Terrell uh, did a good job of covering that up because hungry Wildcats were all around, but a big loss on the play, and it's going to be fourth down and about 16 yards needed from uh, the 46-yard line for Terrell. If I was them, I'd just, the clock is, uh, I'd take one shot. Yeah, they dug themselves out last time. They may 
Well, I'd give it a go or something. You might get a pass interference, but they're letting the clock run out here. And now finally, uh, Terrell has taken a timeout uh, with uh, 005 uh, left on the clock here in the second quarter. Five seconds all that's left. Wildcats leading Terrell 22-7. We'll take a break, and we'll come back with the last five seconds right after this. Uh-oh. Ten seconds. Four, three, two. One. Here's the final 10 seconds of the first half, and Skinner back in the shotgun rush, throws the ball. The ball was caught down the field, but a loss on the play. The Wildcats will get it at their own 43 with three seconds uh, left on the clock. And you wonder uh, whether the Wildcats, sometimes if you roll the dice, it has a tendency the dice will blow up on you. <laughs> and you can really... Say, why did we do that? They yep. may just want to, you know, just take a knee or something, go into halftime. you got a 22-7 lead. But let's see how Coach Owens uh, decides to play it. We'll leave the coaching to him. And Corian Young is uh, coming up there and talking to every one of his uh, offensive linemen. Now he heads back into the shotgun. Let's see what the Wildcats do. Two receivers left and right. As this should pretty much be the last play unless there's some kind of uh, other first half, unless there's a penalty. And Young will take the snap, and he's back to pass. Here's a draw play across the 45 to the 50. This is Colton Allen, and he will make it down to the uh, Terrell 40-yard line. And that's uh, where the first half is going to come to a conclusion as the Wildcats uh, gain 17 on the draw, but that uh, clock has uh, hit, uh, well, I would say triple zeros, but here at Trim Stadium being very economical, they use just one big zero for the end of the uh, first half. So uh, Wildcats leading uh, Terrell by the score of 22 to 7. And uh, an entertaining first half. Uh, fans have had to watch most of it from underneath umbrellas, but uh, at least uh, they're playing. And the fans are getting to watch and didn't have to go home disappointed like they were last week. But uh, that's going to bring us to halftime, which I'm not sure what that's going to in include this year. I see some of the members of the uh, state team, yeah. Jimmy. But anyway, I'll turn it over to you for halftime, and we'll go it, from there. It is halftime here at Prim Stadium, and our halftime brought to you by Silver Springs Floral Galleon Insurance. Century 21 hometown discount wheel and tire. We're going to take a minute. We'll be right back. When the Silver Springs Wildcats won the 2008 Class 4A Division II football championship, it was the culmination of five months of hard work 15 seconds. James, don't count. Just send it to me when you get it. The Wildcats finished the season with a 14 and 2 record that included a 22 to 16 victory over Wichita Falls Rider in a nationally televised game on ESPN2, and then nine straight victories to close out the season. With a playoff berth on the line, the Wildcats won the final three regular season games. Then they beat Lindale 42 to 28 and Waxahachie 35 to 21, the first two rounds of the playoffs. In the regional semifinals, Sulphur Springs dominated previously unbeaten Denison 42 to 21. Then proved their worth with a white knuckle 52 to 47 victory over Rockwall Heat at Texas Stadium. That advanced the Wildcats to the state semifinals where they beat Everman 47 to 34, sending them to the Alamo Dome to face Dayton on December the 20th for the state championship. All the Wildcats did while there was score more points in a Class 4A championship game than any team in history while piling up more than 800 yards of total offense, also a state championship game record, on their way to a 69-49 victory in front of 10,000 home fans who made the trip. It was the first team state championship in school history. The Wildcats set dozens of school records, both as a team and individually, but that was secondary to the pride and spirit they gave the school and town during their historic season. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give the 2008 state champions a rousing round of applause for all of the great memories and their historic accomplishment.
and members of the 08 team out on the center of the field as they were being honored here this evening for their 10th anniversary year and uh, great accomplishment for these Wildcats. Coach Owens out with uh, this group of young men that have uh, assembled here this evening for this game. They're sitting over in the uh, south area of the uh, stadium um, observing the game and of course being honored here tonight. A uh, good number of the team uh, able to be here this evening uh, to participate in this. The rain continues to come down steadily here at Prim Stadium as uh, we are at halftime. There will be no band from the uh, Terrell side and uh, obviously no uh, marching by the Silver Springs band here this evening. And it is the start of the second half of play as the Wildcats will be receiving the ball. They'll be defending the north goal. Terrell will be moving uh, from the south goal. Terrell in uh, white and red uniforms. And here goes a quick kick. Yes, uh, they try an onside kick to start things. There's a big uh, uh, they, uh, Greenville, or excuse me, Terrell. <laughs> it looked like Greenville. <laughs> yeah. But they, uh, they recovered the onside kick, and it did go 10 yards just across the 50. And boy, do they uh, yeah. uh, kind of pull one over on the Wildcats here with an onside kick to start the second half. They even faked us out on that one. They oh. started out so quickly there. I was looking at the Wildcat uh, beat the pro shooting goals for the Silver Springs Wildcat basketball. They're they're doing quite well in getting ready for their season this year. So uh, Terrell uh, will start with football. It wasn't supposed to go that way, but uh, they pull off the onside kick and uh, have the ball uh, just across midfield on about the 49-yard line in Wildcats territory. And uh, Terrell football. And uh, here's uh, Skinner, uh, the man under. We'll take the snap, uh, rolling the option to the right. He's trying to keep around the corner, and he's going to just turn that corner and then uh, get blasted out of bounds. Looked like he gained a yard or two. Let's give him uh, two yards on the play and be second down and eight for Terrell up around uh, the Wildcat 47-yard line. The Wildcats have a player down on the field. Um, yeah, back there around the secondary. Yes, and uh, he's uh, kind of dealing with. Uh, looks like it looks like Nike. Dugan on the corner. Yeah, and uh, there they have the training staff uh, over there uh, trying to help him. We have an injured player. No, he's up. He's okay, up. he is. Yeah, right. Yeah. To, uh, who said uh, that? That uh, that seems to get him to jump up every time <laughs> when he starts to take the break. So we. Uh, Dugan is, is walking on his own. Uh, he has a, a, a member of the training staff. I, that's Tammy Carroll, I believe, with him. Yeah. And uh, he's, uh, but he is uh, mainly doing his own walking. So hopefully uh, we can get him back on the field and shake off uh, whatever uh, nagging injury that uh, he appears to have. Yeah. I thought for a moment he might have hurt an ankle, but maybe it was just getting the wind knocked out of him. Or that something. was not Tammy Carroll. That was actually, I think, uh, uh, one of her, her assistants, oh, yeah. a new assistant uh, that she has. Here we go. So second down and eight now from uh, the Wildcats' 47-yard line, and uh, Skinner will uh, fake. And now here's a pitch, and it's a bad one. Picked up and then snowed under there for the Wildcats, rushing in there uh, to make a good play. Is that Austin Dodd that uh, came uh, roaring in from the safety position, look like? Right, was. He will not. There there he goes, shows me that number one, and all the way back to the 44-yard line, and that is a loss of six yards, so it's uh, going to be a third down and 16 for uh, the Terrell Tigers uh, from uh, their own 44-yard uh, line. That was uh, not a good uh, pitch. No, and there's still a little mist falling out there, and that feels, that turf's a little wet, so that ball's going to be just a little slick. Jimmy, one of the things we talked about, uh, Butch and I did, was the fact that Terrell really hurting themselves with two mistakes. The Wildcats have not, uh, right. other than uh, kind of falling asleep on that uh, onside kick, and that's something that will really irk uh, Coach Owens as we have a timeout here on the field. 11.06 uh, to play in the third quarter. Wildcats 22 and Terrell 7. Let's take a break here, and we'll be back in a moment. 22 for the Wildcats, 7 for Terrell, 11.06 left to go in this third quarter of play. Quick timeout for Terrell as they kind of regroup a little bit uh, after that big loss. Yeah, let's actually call this third down and 17 needed for the ball at the Wildcats 44, or excuse me, at Terrell's own 44-yard line. A big loss there all the way back in their own territory now. And Skinner under center. 
We'll take the snap and the ball's on the ground again. He picks it up. He's got three players in his face and he just sailed it over the receiver. And the receiver chased it because it looked like it might be a backward pass, which would be a live football. Right. And if you're ever in doubt, go go for it. And uh, but it does does wind out incomplete. But if that's a live ball, wherever it went out of bounds, that's where they're and marking that's it. what they're doing. That was a live ball, and they just lost another huge chunk of yardage all the way back to their own 31-yard line. That was a loss of 13 yards on a live pass. So give that receiver credit for realizing that that was a pass that went back beyond or back behind the line of scrimmage and was a live ball. So punt time for uh, Terrell is uh, they have gone steadily backwards after that onside kick. They lost 20 yards. And uh, here's the uh, punt. They get it away. It's kicked toward Austin Dodd. He calls for the fair catch and makes it at the uh, 38 in Wildcats territory. First and 10. Uh, let's, uh, let's mark it at the 39-yard line. First down and 10 for the Wildcats at their own 39 after the fair catch by Austin Dodd. And Dodd very cool and collected as he caught that one because there was a terrible player just kind of running up to his face. And, um, you know, sometimes you just get a little afraid of that, but uh, not Dodd. He just stood right there and caught it. And another thing, you know, it is wet out there, and uh, it'd be very easy to drop that ball. And uh, so okay. a good uh, good hands there by Austin Dodd. And uh, DeCorey and Young from the shotgun. Wildcats at their own 39. The snap is back, and there's a handoff or running back uh, straight ahead. I think Colton Allen on that up to the 40-yard uh, line. And uh, that's a gain of a one on the play. Had that Allen look to it. Allen uh, was the leading uh, ground gainer in that uh, first half for the Wildcats, according to Butch Burney. And he's usually very, very close, if not right on the mark with his stats. 5'6", 175 pounds, but that young man knows how to use those legs. Second down and nine for the Wildcats at their own 40. DeCorey and Young will uh, hand off again to Allen. And you know, he's uh, struggling to try to get back to the line of scrimmage. He uh, looks like he uh, may have lost a couple of yards. And then a player down on the field looks like one of those big offensive linemen is uh, in uh, some distress. So I think that's Charlie Maddox. Oh, my goodness. Not old Charlie. It looks like. That may not be. But. Well, uh, I think uh, I had that number in mind. But uh, we will uh, take a break for injured uh, uh, Wildcat, and uh, we'll be back in a moment right after this break. Ten minutes to go in this third quarter, 22-7 to seven our score, and Charlie Maddox on his feet back over to the sideline. A little, little woozy, but I think he's all right. She looked like he was shaking his right arm a little bit. Third down and 11 for the Wildcats to Corey and Young uh, back in the shotgun for the Wildcats. Big play for them. They don't want to go. Uh, three and out on their first offensive uh, attempt here in the third quarter. Back to Young. He's uh, back in the Oops. pocket, but the pocket collapses. He rolls uh, to the right, throws down the field incomplete, well short of Jace uh, Thompson, but uh, at least it hit the ground uh, without uh, any uh, interference or from uh, I'm mainly a, an interception was what I was talking about. So the Wildcats will now be called on to punt, and that calls on big uh, Jermon Bryant Amos back there. One of the taller of the Wildcats, if not the tallest. I haven't really checked uh, the roster. He's six foot four, and I mentioned time and time again a basketball player. And uh, back to him, and uh, here's his kick and uh, nice line one. drive kick, and uh, takes a heck of a roll. Uh, it's going to be inside the 10 yard line, or right around the 10, and I think around the 11 is actually where they downed it. Good job of covering uh, that kick also by the Wildcat uh, heading down the field, and uh, uh, Terrell will be pushed all the way back to their 11-yard line. I think that was Eddins. Andy Eddins uh, was the one that uh, got down there and down that ball. He was one of the cornerbacks for the Wildcats. You don't look at a lot of hang time from his punts, but they are certainly line drives with a lot of force behind them. Yeah, that works well if you kick away from that re return mess. Yes. It uh, line drives and takes a big hop into the receiver. You might be punished for that. Exactly. Boy, these some of these windows are kind of hard to see out of tonight. Here's a handoff uh, to the up back for Terrell, and he's straight ahead. Uh, again, well, the pile keeps moving. No, they blew the whistle. Okay, They're up around the 15-yard line. That's going to be a gain of uh, four on the play. Second down and six for Terrell at their own 15-yard uh, line. Boy, battle conditions tonight. Not only, Doug, is uh, we've had an inch of rain here in the 
in the uh, in the booth. <laughs> it's mostly a sealed booth, but uh, I think we've got some condensation problems from the AC. But uh, anyway, we we're it's we're, Doug would argue that point. We're getting some. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, some uh, measurable precip in here. Here's a hand or fake, and, uh, and the quarterback keeps and uh, heads around the corner and knocked out of bounds. Short gain on the play, one yard. Be third down and five for Terrell at their own 16-yard line, and this would be a good place for the Wildcats to really put the cap on them and, and right. have, have good field position after uh, their, their punter's been kicking very short uh, tonight. And, and so if they could force a punt, that would uh, work in their favor. Big uh, third down play here now. Third down and four from the 17-yard line where it's marked. And Skinner again uh, under center. Yeah, back to a throw. He throws an out pattern. The ball uh, caught, was caught uh, across the 22-yard line. That's going to be first close down. for the first it down. Is. And they do move the chain. So first down and 10 uh, for uh, Terrell on a completed pass on an out pattern. Uh, a uh, very nice catch uh, by the receiver for Terrell for the first down at the 22-yard uh, line. So they uh, keep from uh, having to punt deep in their own territory, but Wildcats are making them earn it out there now. 8.40 to go in the third quarter, 22 for the Cats, 7 for Terrell. And here come the Tigers. First down and 10 from the 22-yard uh, line. Like Skinner from under center. He rolls uh, to the left. Now he's uh, going to throw the ball down the field. The receiver was open, or was getting open, but incomplete pass. And somebody's helping us uh, with some condensation removal. And, uh, yes, uh, a shout-out to you – now he's also helping uh, Jim Moore and uh, uh, Kevin Woolley and uh, the crew uh, next door. It looks like uh, Clark Sipolet is in between the two of those fellows. I have to talk to him about who he's consorting with over there, but uh, so we appreciate uh, that fan there. Used to get that kind of help up uh, here in Prim Stadium all the time uh -huh. where we always had condensation problems. Second down and 10 uh, from the 22 for Terrell. And Skinner will uh, hand, uh, fake and hand off to that second option. He's into the secondary across oh, the 40, man. across the 45, the 50, the 45, the 40. Real fast runner, and he's uh, finally brought down all near the 20-yard line, a 21-yard line, and the Wildcats into the field. And once again, as Jimmy and I talked in that first half, that doggone second option. Yeah. And Butch and I talked about that, too. That uh, Just a killer. And the Cats trying to get some substitutions made, and the other team... They're uh, running they're, a play, but uh, that will be blown dead by a whistle. And time out time for out, Wildcats. The Wildcats took time out. They were, they were trying to change uh, personnel groups and all kinds of stuff. So a time out taken by the Wildcats. 8.09 left here in the third quarter. Wildcats 22 and Terrell 7. Let's take a break and be back in a moment. 8.09 to go here in the third quarter. 22-7 to 7 our score Wildcats leading. And here come the Terrell Tigers, uh, first and 10 uh, from uh, the 20-yard uh, line. They've actually marked that ball now. And uh, Skinner under center will take the snap. Here's a pitch uh, to a running back, and uh, he heads up the field for about three yards on the play. Gain of three, second down and seven from the 17-yard line for the Terrell Tigers. Landry Tyson among the tacklers, according to Kevin Woolley next door. And uh, Terrell now speeding up the offense a little bit here. And here's a handoff to the up back, and he steams forward all the way across the 10-yard line. Another first down for Terrell. And they look like a kind of a different uh, team here uh, with that onside kick and everything. They are beginning to play with a lot of emotion. And I was going to well, – the one thing I didn't get to talk about with Butch was the fact that despite the Wildcats seemingly with a comfortable lead, Terrell is just continues to stay right here in this ball game down by 15. 22-7 uh, with uh, a 7-26 and uh, counting here in the third quarter. And once again, Skinner under center. Here's a pitch, uh, and uh, back is uh, hit back behind the line of scrimmage. A uh, loss uh, on the play of a yard or so. It'll be second down and uh, goal to go from about the, it looks like around the eight yard line. That's the outside of the 18, I think, for soccer. So that would be the eight yard line. So second down and uh, goal to go from the eight for the Tigers. Again, Skinner under the center. 
will take the snap. Fake. And now here's a pitch on the option uh, back uh, on the pitch. Uh, getting up to uh, right around the five-yard line. Ushered out of bounds uh, at the five. It'll be third and goal for the Terrell Tigers down at the five-yard line and uh, Wildcats into the field. And actually, they're going to mark it at the four. So we'll uh, say third down and goal from the four-yard line. The Tigers are putting on the pressure here. Third down goal. As uh, this has been quite a drive, you may recall that... Uh, they uh, had the ball uh, fairly deep in their own territory after uh, a pretty good punt down to the 11. So they're trying to complete an 89-yard drive here. Third down and goal from the four. And uh, handoff uh, touchdown by Terrell. Uh, they're up back uh, into the end zone for a touchdown for the Terrell Tigers. And they trim the lead down to nine now at 22-13 with extra point pending. Yeah, let's see, Terrell nine points behind, and they look to be going for two here. And uh, no, no, I, I take that back. That guy was wandering around, but then he squatted down there to hold the extra point kick. And they're going to fake it anyway. Rolling to the right, throws the ball uh, up for grabs and uh, incomplete. And so Terrell's uh, pass uh, falls uh, into a safe spot there in the end zone. So the two-point uh, try, no good. And 6.27 left uh, here in the third quarter. Our new score here at Gerald Prim Stadium. It's still a tight one. The Wildcats of Sulphur Springs 22 and Terrell 13. Let's take a break. Back in a moment. It's the third quarter. 6.27 left to go in the third quarter. 22 for the Wildcats. 13 for Terrell as they... I've been trying to make a comeback here, and now Terrell's going to send the ball down to the Cats with a kick. And you wonder, oh, that receiving team for the Wildcats, I wonder if they've got some hands guys. I see Jermon Bryant Amos among them. He would be a hands guy. I bet they may have a few of them there anticipating another onside kick here. But, you know, it's the ones you don't anticipate are the ones that will eat you alive, and that's what happened on that kickoff in the second half. Nobody was looking for that. And Terrell came charging out of there and executed it to uh, uh, perfection. Now the Wildcats have dropped back a little bit, but yeah, it's hard to it's hard to do it now when the other team's kind of looking for it. And here's the Terrell kickoff. It's a deep kick, and it's going to be taken at the seven-yard line. Here comes uh, Allen across the 20 to the 25, burst across the 30, 35, across the 40, all the way up to the 45-yard line. Good kickoff return by Colton Allen uh, all the way up to the 45-yard line. That was a 38-yard kickoff return, and that's just what the doctor ordered for the Wildcats. Give some good field position to start uh, their next drive. at their own 45-yard line. And again, uh, DeCorey and Young from the shotgun, two receivers left and right, running back uh, to his left, the left-handed quarterback from the shotgun. Snaps those hands together a couple of times, receives the snap back in the pocket. He's looking deep, and now he's going to uh, tuck it and run, but uh, he's going to run out of bounds. He'll actually lose uh, a couple of yards but he was just trying to get to the safety of the sideline and not get really uh, hit hard there. But he has the deep pattern. Uh, boy, they have done a good job of uh, shutting that down tonight. The Wildcats have mainly had a kind of a, a control passing game, a short game. And I think they had 63 yards in the first half, Butch said. So second down and 12 now for the Wildcats at uh, the 43-yard line in their own uh, end of the field. DeCorey and Young from the shotgun. And we'll take the snap, and it'll be a running play, and it's a good one, and shocks uh, Sims uh, into the secondary, runs for the first down, and finally forced out of bounds down at the 32-yard line in Terrell territory. DeCorey and Chalk Sims. Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep says, way to go Wildcats on a first down. And from the 32, here's a handoff. Sims again uh, to the right. And now everybody else has stopped except Sims <laughs> was running into the secondary, but the flag flew, and uh, we're going to have an infraction here on the play. The illegal procedure on the offense. That'll cost the Wildcats five yards. 
And we'll push the ball from the 32 back to the 37-yard line. So first down and 15 now for the Wildcats. As uh, somebody moved a little bit too early on, on that offense. So first and 15. Wildcats send two receivers out to the right, have a single receiver to the left. Bryant Amos is in there as the uh, B back. A running back Sims, a Chalk Sims still in there. And here's a snap and a fake and uh, DeCorian Young. Oh, he was uh, tackled by one hand as somebody got a hold of the jersey and, and ripped him to the ground back at the uh, 41 yard line. So after the penalty and then uh, a run that uh, goes awry and uh, it's uh, 18 yards needed for the first down here on uh, be second down in uh, 18. Again, uh, Young, they have two DeCorians back there. Spell different. Now Young uh, gets a rush and will throw the ball down the field. A receiver uh, heading uh, that way Got and uh, caught. Nope. Oh, incomplete. Uh, was dropped. Thank you, Jimmy. And uh, incomplete pass, and that'll uh, set up a third down and long. Just almost Landry Tyson uh, running uh, the pattern. 5.22 left to go in the third quarter. 22-13 our score here with the Wildcats leading. Boy, I know Landry would have liked to have latched onto that. Mm. Crowd got excited for just a second, but now three receivers off to the right, and Landry's kind of that lonesome end like uh, the Air Force used to have uh, back in the dinosaur days when I was first uh, watching uh, college football. They played TCU in the Cotton Bowl. 0-0 tie in that one way back when. Here back to DeCorian Young, and again, we have a play stopped by the whistle here. Delay game, offense. You know, delay. Third down. So that'll cost them another five. This this is, uh, this one will not, they will not want to put on the resume. Mm -hmm. This one's uh, been kind of ugly here, and boy, they have third and forever. They've got to get to the 22, and they're at the uh, 46, so they have 24 yards needed on third down here. Back to DeCorian De Young. He's looking. Now he's going to run out of the pocket across the 45 to the 40, across the 35, down the field. Did he stay in bounds? No. He's going to step out at around the uh, 30, and that's going to be about eight yards short of the first down. So it'll be fourth down. Really? It'll be third and nine, I think, at about the 31. So Or fourth and nine. And let's see what the Wildcats choose to do here. They have a 22 to 13 lead. There's 5.01 left here in the third quarter. Going to go for it. They are deep in uh, Terrell territory, but we found out Terrell can go. Uh, they just went 89 yards on a touchdown drive. And, and so here's a big play for the Wildcats on fourth down and nine. Back to... Uh, the quarterback, he shoots a pass out incomplete. Oh, it was a drop pass out there and intended for uh, Bryce McQueen, and that'll turn the ball over. Over on downs uh, for the Wildcats, and the ball will go over to the Terrell Tigers. Wildcats 22, Terrell 13 with 4.58 left here in the third, third. quarter. Mm -hmm. Boy, I, I, oh, I was looking at fourth down. That third, that third quarter mark is way on the other end of that scoreboard. It, confused me temporarily there. I thought there is no way that we've already made it <laughs> deep into the fourth quarter. Yeah, those are hard to determine. They're in different places on different scoreboards. Well, here comes Terrell now. First down and 10 from their own 31-yard line, and they'll try the first option this time, and he burst into the secondary across the 40. First down on the run for Terrell up to the 45-yard line, and this, boy, they have got to, their, their confidence has to be surging right now because they are really uh, kind of taking over the momentum in this ball game. First down and 10 for the Terrell Tigers at their own 45-yard line. They trail 22-13 with 4.42 left here in the third quarter. And here come the Tigers. As uh, Don Meredith used to say, old Mo has changed uniforms. Here's a pitch and uh, uh, around the corner the runner goes and it's another pretty good gain across the uh, midfield mark and down to around the 48-yard uh, line, three yards short of the first down. Be second down and only three for Terrell as all of a sudden this uh, option offense uh, really uh, running to perfection. As uh, Jimmy made it sound like, uh, as we were talking, it may have been an off-mic uh, uh, conversation during a break, but 
they they look like they got the, the their offense fine tuned at halftime. Mm -hmm. It's uh, tuned up now and uh, running uh, very smoothly. Here's a second and three play, and Skinner's back to pass. He's looking to throw. He throws down the field, and a receiver down there incomplete. Oh, a flag, flag. down he for an interference penalty. Wildcats on defense. I had Andy Eddins back there, but he may have uh, laid on a little bit too much hands there to try to prevent that receiver from catching the ball. And Here's the call. Pass interference, defense, 15 yards, first down. Okay, so that's the bad news, but we kind of figured that one out. A big walk off of 15 yards, but it does uh, take uh, from the line of scrimmage. It's not like professional football where it's the mark of the yeah. spot of the foul. One of the big uh, rule changes, differences in uh, high school and college in the pro game. But uh, still 15 mighty yards there. That uh, moves it all the way down to the Wildcat 33-yard line where it's first and 10 for Terrell. And uh, they've got uh, one score on the board. And uh, looking for more here. So they trail 22-13 with 3.41 left in the third quarter. And Skinner, first option, uh, handoff uh, bursting through there, running for a first down down to the 20-yard line. And all of a sudden, uh, Terrell, uh, again, ripping uh, off uh, massive gains of yardage. And moving quickly. Yes, they, they've really increased the pace. Uh, they have a good pace, almost uh, NASCAR-like. Here's a handoff again to that first option. This uh, player will be in there for a gain of about three. Wildcats defense, that uh, played pretty well. They actually came out with a football running with it, but uh, nobody's going to recognize that. Oh, and there's a flag for delay of game, I would think. Or maybe uh -oh. on Sportsman, I don't know. Well, you'd, we'll have know to, you'd have to be guessing that that player did that knowing that the whistle had blown. Here's the call. Delay game, defense. Oh, boy, that's a tough call right there. That, yeah. that is a little tough call right there. At least it's delay of game and not unsportsmanlike. That could have been costly. Oh my! Yeah, I just I I I, didn't, I don't like that call, but you know I don't get a vote. And there's the mark down to uh, the 12-yard line. It's now first or second down and two from the 12-yard line. I mean, obviously the kid thought uh, he had uh, recovered a fumble, but I I don't know. You have to read somebody's mind. Here's a second option now, and Terrell into the end zone for a touchdown. Another 12-yard touchdown run, and all of a sudden this option, this flex bone for Terrell is unstoppable here in the third quarter. Their second touchdown, remember it was 22-7 when we started, and they have scored 12 unanswered points. It looks like uh, they're going to uh, kick the extra point, but of course that's what we thought last time and they faked it, but I don't know, 1.2 point, points, not really going to gain you anything there. Here's the kick on the extra point, and the kick is good. 3.06 left in the third quarter. New score here from Gerald Prim Stadium. The Wildcats holding on for dear life. Wildcats 22 and Terrell 20. Let's take a break, and we'll be back in a moment. 3.06 to go in the third quarter. 22 for the Wildcats, 20 for Terrell. Terrell scores a couple of uh, touchdowns here in this uh, third quarter, and uh, things could go, if things go wrong, they might score a third with the rate that they've been moving the ball. Yeah, the they're going to, go incumbent ahead. on the Wildcats offense to try to get in yes. gear here and try to match uh, the intensity because obviously the on the defensive side the Wildcats defense is struggling to try to find the answers against this flex bone especially in the second half I don't know if they made some adjustments or what but, but they sure look a lot better running that offense a battle of two coaches that really are, are good friends uh, Mike Shields and Greg Owens and uh, they're putting on the battle tonight. Here's a kick uh, down to the Wildcats. They take it at the 23, running all the way across nice the ball. field, across the 30, 35, and uh, Colton Allen across the 40. Oh, excuse me, that was Aiden Walker, not 22, but number 12. And uh, Aiden with a very nice uh, run back at Wildcats. That's one thing they've done well is return kickoffs as they return that one up to the 40-yard line of their own 40. First down and 10. 
Colton Allen had a great block that helped that too. And DeCorian Young from the shotgun has trip receivers out to the right. Wildcats have got to get the offense in gear here, and they'll try a running play. And that's uh, Caden Davis, and he's dropped for a yard loss. Uh, boy, Terrell, they just, you can see pep in their step. Uh, they, they just look like a team that, that feels like they uh, are, are playing very, very well, and uh, they're feeding off that. Second down and 11 for the Wildcats at their own 39. Wildcats need something good to happen here. Two receive, no, three receivers left, two to the right. Naked backfield there for Young from the shotgun. And now takes a snap. We'll throw the ball out, and it's incomplete. Went uh, through the hands of Austin Dodd. Third down and 11 for the Wildcats offense. And all of a sudden, they've kind of hit the proverbial stone wall here. Well, they're struggling right now to try to find something that works. As uh, Terrell has been uh, on the storm here in the second half with 13 unanswered points. And it's a two-point ball game at 22-20 with 2.19 left here in the third quarter. Corian Young from the shotgun will take the snap. Fake to the running back. Looks down the field. Throws. Caught by Austin Dodd into the secondary. But they wrestle him down at the 30-yard line. But a, a, a good, positive play for the Wildcats offense. A first down, down to the Terrell 31-yard line. Uh, Silver Springs Chrysler Dodge Jeep first down. We were looking for something uh, good and positive, and that was uh, both of those things. DeCorian Young from the shotgun takes the snap. Fake to the running back. Uh, down over to Dodd, and that one uh, dropped got down. through uh, the hands incomplete. It looked like he was thinking about the run, uh, maybe perhaps a little bit earlier than uh, the catch. But uh, the football's wet, too. Second down and 10 from the 31-yard line, and here is a handoff to the running back. Around the corner uh, goes the running back, and he's escorted out of bounds. There's a, flag. There's a flag for a hit out of bounds. That was Davis on the run, and somebody clocked him out of bounds, and that's a no-no. And that's, you know, that's the kind of play it's a it's a foul of aggression, you know, of, of trying to to do something good, but it, it really reflects yeah. negatively on the team here's, in a big way. Here's the call. After the play, personal foul, white number four. Okay, big Greenville. Is that number four? That's their quarterback. Surely he's not playing defense. <laughs> I don't know what that number signified. That doesn't seem to make any sense. I don't think Micah Skinner's playing defense for, uh, for uh, I want to call him Greenville. That red and white's got me buffaloed. We have not played Paris, and this is the first time that Coach Owens has scheduled him since he's been the coach here. Their last uh, meeting was in by district when Brad Turner, well, it was like Brad Turner's last game, by district against Terrell, a loss 34-17. Ball moved uh, down uh, all the way to the 16-yard uh, line, first and 10 for the Wildcats. DeCorey and Young from the shotgun takes the snap and uh, running back right up the middle and a uh, good ripping run for the Wildcats and uh, going to be uh, down uh, close to about the 7-yard line. That's uh, going to... Oh, there's flag. another flag. Oh, flags are flying all over the place. I think uh, that was some really extracurricular activity well after the play. That was Colton Allen on the carry. And Cheryl's coach is coming out to come get their player, I think. We could have somebody. Well, I tell you, this is getting chippy out there now. A hockey game broke Here's out here. Yeah. Here's the call. Okay. <laughs> yeah. the play. Dead ball. Personal foul. 70 white. 70 is ejected from the ball game. Oh, my. An ejection for Green. Uh, uh, Terrell. Terrell. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> oh my, that Jimmy's that's gonna that hurt. The, oh, that's the 320-pound freshman. Yeah, just really getting caught up. Uh, the coach wondered what a 14-year-old might do, and he, he found out, didn't he? Might make a personal foul. I'm gonna have to stand up, and rather than try to look through uh, our glass next door, that it yeah. is very hard to see through tonight with all the condensation and everything. First down, uh, goal to go for the Wildcats uh, at the five-yard line. A minute 50 left to go in the quarter. And the Wildcats 
but they narrow lead 22-20, but they've maneuvered down the field. They've had some help uh, from the striped shirts uh, with a couple of penalties, and that's actually on Terrell, though. Not going to credit the officials for calling uh, it out of bounds and uh, some other shenanigans going on at the end of the play. First down and goal to go for the Wildcats at the five-yard line. DeCorian Young uh, will take the snap. Uh, hands off, uh, running back uh, hitting up in there, and he's going to be down to around the three-yard line. And so second down and goal to go from the and three. And there's another flag, I think. You know, I thought I saw a flag. Yep. Back judge. Chucked uh, at the last minute. Allen picks up about three yards on the play. Tackled by LeBrandon Owens. Here we go. Cameron Anthony, flag on the play. And I saw something. I'm going to tell you, but first of all, we're going to see what happened here on the flag. Here's the call. He's got to be in just the right spot. After the play, a sportsmanlike conduct, 16 blue. Oh, my goodness. Landry Tyson. That's and, the second and, penalty on him tonight. You know, and he could be, you know, trying to help his teammate out with a late block that the officials. And I think that was the issue. Ruled, uh, you know, yeah. as, as too late. Uh, the thing I saw that I wanted to comment on, Charlie Maddox is back in at right tackles. <laughs> we uh, had said that he had some difficulty, but uh, uh, he's back in there, so he was able to shake off whatever nagging thing that uh, had brought him to the sideline, so good to see Charlie back there. I know he's an inspirational part of that offensive line, especially after last year when a lot of people thought that his uh, football days might be numbered because of the serious head injury that he had last year. Second down and uh, 17, goal to go for the Wildcats, and uh, Corey and Young throws an out pattern as a receiver there. Oh, the ball was dropped. Oh, my. That receiver looked wide open in the end zone but just could not uh, come up with it. Yep. I think that's uh, going to be uh, Dugan. Yeah, it was uh, intended for Day-Day Dugan or Damian and incomplete. So third down and goal for the Wildcats from the 17-yard line. Boy, you had uh, just first down and goal from the five, and now you're scuffling to to try to try to, try to get it here. Only well, takes one play though. Decorian back in the shotgun. We'll take the snap and uh, fake to the running back, and uh, looking and now throwing to the running back wide open, and the ball is caught for a touchdown. Touchdown for the Wildcats, that running back that took the fake. And then uh, caught the ball. And uh, once again, Jermon Bryant Amos. And Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op says, way to go, Wildcats. And how big is that play, Jimmy Rogers? Yeah, that's a big one. Caught him back in the game. 28-20. Yeah, that, that's what they needed to do, kind of stop the bleeding. Here's the extra point uh, kick on the way, and the kick is good. And that extra point was kicked by OCL Lopez. So 107 left uh, here in the uh, third quarter, and a new score here from Gerald Prim Stadium. The Wildcats 29 and Terrell 20. And let's take a break. Back in a moment. One minute, seven seconds to go in the third quarter. 29 for the Wildcats, 20 for Terrell. And the Wildcats with that touchdown kind of uh, get momentum back over to their side just a bit. At least they get their heart back in the game. Jimmy, I have a feeling our uh, audience has uh, increased. Uh, a lot of the fans are dressed like empty seats uh, down <laughs> below. But, I'm, you know, I'm sure there's just a limit to how much you can sit through a wet ball game. And so hopefully uh, they're, uh, we're uh, giving them the story here if they're uh, heading home. And it looked like a lot of them have already headed that way. Here's a Wildcats uh, kickoff, and uh, it's a uh, kick to, to the left side. A uh, fair catch. It's a uh, muffed. It muffed out, out of bounds, and it looked like they'll mark it maybe around the 24-yard line where it went out of bounds. Well, also, Don, remember that it is third quarter, and the time is just at 10 o'clock, so it's bedtime for some folks. Well, that's true. I used to have season tickets for the Sacramento Kings and have a tie ball game with two minutes left to go in the game and see people getting up. Whoops, it's 10 o'clock. Yep. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> a minute five in the third. Wildcats leading 29-20. They've marked the ball at the 26-yard line. 
And uh, so here's uh, Skinner in the offense, and they'll hit uh, that first man, and he hits a stone wall of Wildcats. That time, go. very good defense. Uh, I would say uh, no gain or perhaps a loss of one on the play back to the 25. So second down and 11. No, they'll put it right back at the line of scrimmage. So no gain on the play. Second down and 10 from the 26-yard line. As we're in the last minute here of the third quarter. But uh, Terrell was um, making a serious challenge, but still the Wildcats have to stop them here. And uh, there's another quick uh, hitting uh, play to the first option, running back up uh, just short of the 30-yard line. It's going to be uh, seven yards shy, six and a half yards, uh, about six. Let's just go ahead and call it the 30-yard line. It's pretty near, so let's call it uh, third and six from uh, around the 30. And we're not going to get in another play in this quarter. That is uh, the clock uh, hitting triple zero that time. And uh, we played three here from Gerald Prim Stadium. And once again, those four fingers go up uh, in the air for the Wildcats uh, to play well in that fourth quarter. So we played three here from Gerald Prim Stadium. And our score after three, uh, the Wildcats of Sulphur Springs 29 and Terrell 20. We'll be, we'll be back with the start of the fourth quarter right after this. It's the fourth quarter. Our score 29 for the Cats, 20 for Terrell. And just to update you on some of the games in the district, Corsicana has defeated Greenville at Corsicana, 40 to 14. And Kaufman has defeated Ennis at Ennis, 37 to 7. Those are final mm -hmm. scores for us. Forney and North Forney tied at 13 apiece. And of course, here in Sulphur Springs, 29, Terrell, 20. Yeah, most people would tell you North Forney a much better team than Forney, but when you're battling for the city championship, uh, yeah. sometimes all bets are off That's in a it. big ball game like that. Bragging rights on the line. Here's uh, uh, Terrell's play. The quarterback back to pass has all day to throw back there, and now he's going to sail the ball down the field. Receiver tried to run under it. He had triple coverage back there, incomplete pass. Pretty good coverage by the Wildcats. Had all day long to throw that, but thrown incomplete, and it'll be fourth down and seven from the 29-yard line, and you would think that uh, Terrell would punt the football. Had plenty of time, but everybody seemed to be kind of covered. You could have bust in coverage on that play. And Jace Thompson is back to, to field the punt, and he's not back any too deep, but, but that's uh, warranted because Terrell has not. They've done two things very poorly tonight, throw the football for the most part and punt the football. Here's a high snap, and the punter will get it out of there. It's another short kick. It's going to hit... Uh, and take a good roll. He got uh, close to 10 yards on the roll. It went all the way to the 39 in Wildcats territory. So not all that uh, bad of a punt, maybe 30 yards or so. And so first down and 10 for the Wildcats, and they'll start at their own 39-yard line. So you, maybe they've uh, turned the corner there. Another good drive would really help. 11.47 left uh, here in the fourth quarter. Wildcats leading 29-20. to and they would like to do like they did against Wakeland last week and just hog the ball, take it over, and say, you can't have it. It was after Wakeland scored six and a half minutes left in the game. Never saw the ball again. DeCorian Young from the shotgun. We'll take the snap. Uh, running back uh, has it across the 40, across the 35, or across oh. midfield. And uh, that was uh, Chalk Sims. And he's all the way to the 26-yard line. What does chalk stand for? Maybe chocolate, I heard. <laughs> C-H-O-C. So it, well, to the 46-yard line, first and down and 10 for the Wildcats. And here's Sims again, and another a really good run by the, uh, the battering ram. And he's close to the first down, maybe a yard short. Inside the 37 yard line, and they need to the 36, so less than a yard, but call it a yard. Uh, second and one, and again, one of those offensive coordinators' delights. Second and short to Corey and Young will hand off to Sims, and Sims burrows in there. Man, he is doing some good running and uh, gets all the way across the 30 for the first down. And DeCorian Chalk Sims, looking good. Uh, he 
Looked like he's ready to play some football after some nagging injuries. Here's uh, another running back. This is uh, Caden Davis uh, getting involved, and he crosses the 25. And down to the 24-yard line, Caden, just a sophomore, as we talked about all last week. And five yards uh, picked up, five more needed. So uh, second down and five from the 24-yard uh, line for the Wildcats. They'll move two receivers to the right, single receiver to the left. DeCorian Young takes a quick look at the wristband, takes a snap, and handoff uh, running back. Uh, Davis uh, hitting up, crossing the 20-yard line, and then he kind of left his feet, and, and somebody picked him up right at that point and knocked him back, but he gets forward procedure for the first down at the 18-yard line. First down and 10 for the Wildcats at the Terrell 18, and another first down for the Wildcats. And it's been moving so fast, we haven't had a chance to credit the last three to the Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep first down. And uh, about 10 minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Wildcats leading 29-20 and on the march here. DeCorian Young turns, hands off to, no, fakes to Davis. Now throws down the field, incomplete. Oh, it was, had a receiver down there and he looked like uh, there was some kind of distress going on with that receiver. And I do not want to speculate. But uh, he's down on the field right now. The Wildcats will look at him. And so we have an injured player timeout here. 9.56 left in the fourth quarter. Wildcats leading Terrell 29-20. 9.56 left to go in our ball game here this evening. Silver Springs 29, Terrell 20 as Dugan comes off the field. Yeah, he, uh, he may have cramped up. I, I hope uh, that, that's the kind of thing on a, on a kind of a warm night. Uh, and you try to be as hydrated as you can, but sometimes those, but it, uh, anyway, that would be much better than a muscle pull or something like that, that what I thought it was initially. So anyway, Dugan is walking off under his own power, again with a member of the training staff. So second down and 10 now from uh, the 18-yard uh, line for DeCorian Young. He'll take the snap and hand off the running back. And there's across the 15. This is Davis across the 10. Ushered out of bounds and thrown down out there. But a good uh, run by Davis. And it's uh, going to be close to the first down. That is a first down. That's a Silver, uh, Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep first down. And uh, some of the uh, chain gang gets to take uh, this off now because it's first and goal. So they don't need the 10-yard uh, uh, indicators. And so first and goal from the 8-yard line for DeCorian Young. We'll take the snap and uh, hands off uh, Colton Allen. Allen, touchdown, Wildcats! Right up the middle of Main Street. And Northeast Texas former school up says, way to go, Wildcats. Boy, nice, uh, strong run. And we've seen that all night long from Colton Allen. He has really had a, you know, but uh, it's Chalk Sims has looked pretty good. Davis uh, had, a, had a good drive on this one. So uh, Wildcats uh, getting a lot of good options uh, from the running back position. And Zavala is in uh, for this extra point. The snap a little low, but a nice uh, holding job there by Jace Thompson, and the kick is good. And again, that was by Brandon Zavala. So a new score here at Gerald Prim Stadium as the Wildcats took a close game that was a two-point game, and they've scored two touchdowns. Uh, unanswered. 9.31 left in the fourth quarter. Wildcats 36 and Terrell 20. Let's take a break back in a moment. 9.31 to go here in the fourth quarter. 36 for the Cats, 20 for Terrell. And uh, OCL Lopez will be kicking off again for the Wildcats. Again, he and Brandon Zavala kind of sharing those kicking duties. And Lopez approaches and will boot a short one. Real Caught short, the Wildcats the uh, look like they recovered the onside kick. I don't see, have you seen an indication yet? No. Looked like they made the catch. He did catch it in it the air. It did go 10 yards. It didn't touch the ground. Wildcats and now they got it. Now they got finally the officials getting their heads together and making sure that they that uh, everything was as it was supposed to be, and the Wildcats uh, respond with their uh, onside kick. And that was uh, excellent execution. Looked like uh, Terrell kind of got caught uh, napping a little bit there. Yeah, great, great play by the Wildcats. Wildcats have the ball on the Terrell 45-yard line. 
a receiver uh, trotting in kind of late there. Connor Bergen is now the receiver uh, out to the right. And uh, here's a handoff running back, and that's uh, Chalk Sims, and he's uh, up to the 40-yard line. And a good five-yard gain uh, by Chalk, but uh, got a flag a, on the far side. There's a flag on the far side there. Here's the call. Well, I say they're going to discuss it again, it looks like. Little discussion going on here. You know, these guys probably missed a game, too, last week, so they... Yeah, we're going to call off the flag, I bet you. He looks like, yeah. Yep, exactly. So, flag is picked up. It's a five-yard gain for Sims. It'll be second down and five for the Wildcats at uh, the 40-yard line in Terrell Territory. And I can kind of see those wheels turning in Matt Young's head uh, once again, kind of going back to last week with that, we're going to take the ball and we're not going to share. And just hog that ball and eat the clock. Second down and five from the 40 in Terrell Territory. Chalk Sims straight ahead, gains four. He's one yard short of the first down. The 36-yard line, it'll be a third down and one. Well, the Wildcats uh, at their uh, 36 in Terrell territory. And again, in no particular hurry, they'll probably snap that ball inside of 10 seconds, maybe closer to five. And just in no particular hurry at all. Of course, they've got a 16-point lead, so not quite as dire as last week where they really had to hang on when their lead was only two points at that point. And they ate up the last six and a half minutes. Back to uh, DeCorian Young. Here's a handoff, and Sims runs for the first down. And look at that finish he put on that run all the way up around the, well, they're going to mark it back at the 31. But that's first down and 10 for the Wildcats. Another first down for the Wildcats. Silver Springs Dodge Chrysler Jeep first down. And Sims now checks out. And uh, what a what a good uh, uh, second half he has had for the Wildcats, especially, you know, after they really got challenged. It was a two-point ball game. And he's been a big part of uh, spurting out. All these running backs have really uh, come to play here in, in the second half. DeCorian Young from the shotgun. He's got uh, Caden Davis is in there as a running back position right now. And uh, Davis will take the handoff across the 30. He bursts toward the end zone. Davis is into the end zone. What a touchdown. 31 yards for the Wildcats. And boy, Davis got there right away. Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op says, way to go, Wildcats. Well, you got to hand it to these Wildcats when they were really challenged. They, uh, uh, the, to me, that's the, the lead sentence uh, in the story is when they were challenged, they answered the call. And three unanswered touchdowns and extra point uh, pending here. And this is... I believe Lopez, OCL Lopez. Ball is down. Oh, uh, uh, that one didn't work. That uh, a little bit of trouble on the hold, and I'm not sure what Lopez had to kick at, but it wasn't uh, much, and, and the kick uh, goes awry. And he might, uh, for one reason or the other, either the wet football or something. Anyway, the kick is no good. 7.20 left here in the fourth quarter. New score here at Gerald Prim Stadium. The Wildcats now have 42, and Terrell has 20. And let's take a break. Back in a moment. 7.20 to go in the fourth quarter. 42 for the Cats, 20 for Terrell. And we're going to say the defensive play of the game was that onside kick for the Wildcats that has given them a very comfortable lead. That helped everybody. Offense, defense, everybody. Here's uh, Zavala's kickoff, and he sends a short one down the field. Fair caught by Greenville. Excuse me, Terrell. <laughs> That is, I don't know, something about that red and white. Well, that's okay. I need to say the defensive game of the uh, play of the game brought to you by Balkum Insurance. Now we're, we're oh, both right. <laughs> catching up here. <laughs> My apologies to the Balkum Insurance. Ball will be marked at the 34 yard line for the Terrell Tigers. At least they're not the Longview logos. How was I kept calling them that <laughs> last year? <laughs> Uh, that, was, that was so bad, we got rid of them as an opponent. Here's a pitch on the option for uh, Terrell, and they'll gain two yards up to the 36-yard line. Second down and eight at their own 36. But they, the Wildcats have taken all of the steam out of these Tigers. You know, I wonder how big of a play was getting that massive nose tackle. 
removed from the game. game. You know, that, that's a huge loss. They have almost no size except for that 320-pound player. And uh, he has to be a really big loss right in the middle there. And now uh, there's a quick uh, hit uh, hitter to the first option and just stop for a yep. one-yard gain. It's going to be third down and uh, nine right at the 35-yard uh, line. And that was almost generous. And just like, you know, they got within two points, and the Wildcats start scoring, and now the Terrell offense is sputtering again. The whole Mo now is uh, taking off that white and red, and he's put on the blue and the white of the Wildcats. Here's third and nine. Back to Skinner down the field. Incomplete, a drop pass. We've seen a lot of drops tonight. Maybe you expect that, you know, wet football. I thought the Wildcats were real smart last week. They went out on a rainy day. They were anticipating a lot of rain against Lovejoy. You can't plan, I guess, for lightning, but but they, they practiced a lot handling the wet football. And so that's, I don't know if, you know, how, how much good that actually does, but uh, it's bound to do some, I guess, to sure. practice uh, working with that wet thing. Here's uh, the punt, and now the punter's in trouble trying to roll out of there. He throws a pass down the field, had a receiver down there, just almost hit him. I tell you, they do a good job of recovering from disaster in their kicking game, but it just it doesn't quite work. Uh-oh, here's a couple. There's flags everywhere. Isn't it? Fly on down, Bill, number 62. The penalty is declined. Of course he was. First down, blue. He was covering the punt that never happened. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the problems. His, I'm sure it was his assignment, but, you know, you have a busted play like that and have the punter trying to throw a pass. Yep. And so, anyway, the ball goes over on downs, and what has uh, turned out to, to be a real good uh, few minutes here, the, the uh, last minute of the third quarter and the first uh, six of uh, the fourth quarter here, yep. the Wildcats have put together three unanswered touchdowns. Checking in for the Wildcats at receivers, Chase Haney. It's another one of his responsibilities. Also plays... Uh, some defense for the Wildcats. One receiver right, two to the left. And a new quarterback Oops. in there. And the ball's oh. on the ground and recovered there by Terrell as uh, the quarterback was Noe Ponce was in there trying to, to get some reps and uh, a turnover on the Wildcats. And so the Wildcats commit their first turnover of the night. They have a lost fumble. Well, you've got to have a lot of confidence in your defense when you start making some substitutions with about 5.49 left to go here in the fourth quarter. It is a 42-20 game, so, um, you know, it's not fatal to have something like that happen, but got to depend on that defense to try to recover now. See Colin Wade trotting out there. He's He gets kudos from every coach I talk to every week. Oh, those outside linebackers. And uh, DQ Pitts right along with him. He had a good year. And uh, here's a uh, fake, and now a uh, keep uh, by a new quarterback. There's a hold. There. And flags flying everywhere. As uh, Well, that was a, actually a running back, uh, either that or if he, if he took the snap, it was a Wildcat package, but that was that D.D. George who already has Holding offense number 22, White. And uh, that uh, play will be negated. You may, you may have George back there in quarterback right now trying to – yeah, he's probably a faster we, – we saw what a fast runner he was. He took it to the house on a, a really, really long touchdown run, if I can find it here, a 74 yards. So didn't do as well that time, but then uh, flags and everything else. So first down and 20, ball at the 32, and Terrell's into the field. Also in there for the Wildcats. Let's see. Hunter Goodson is on the defensive line, so go get him, Hunter. We'll call out some of the other young fellas that are in there. And Terrell first down in 20, and they'll uh, pitch the ball uh, on the option, and, and the Wildcats uh, backup defenders uh, looking uh, salty out there. There's some starters, some uh, new guys in there, and uh, gain up to the 34-yard line, but they still need... Uh, 18 yards, I believe, uh, will be second down and 18. 
among the defenders. Let's see who else. Connor Bergen, we mentioned him as a receiver a while ago. He's playing defense right now on the corner. Uh, Romeo Hawkins Davis is in there. <laughs> He's a defensive end. Romeo, Romeo, where art thou? There are out there at defensive end is where thou art. With apologies to Shakespeare and all of the thespians out there. And to Romeo himself. <laughs> And I think Skinner is, uh, no, yes, he's back in there. He throws a pass completed, but the receiver blasted out of bounds. It was uh, completed to Samaj Willis. Uh, strange name, this James Backwards. We found that out last year with a quarterback of Hallsville, Samaj something or the other. I can't remember his last name right now, but uh, coach uh, at... Uh, at Hallsville told me that that's what that was, James Backwards. I can't believe that there were that there were actually two of those in the world. And they actually, there were two of them on the same field when Hallsville played uh, Terrell. How weird is that? But of course, you know, you take Raymond and turn it around and you get Nomar Garcia Parra and Nomar Mazzara, the Rangers. And two of those guys. Timeout. Timeout taken uh, by Terrell on uh, third and 17. Uh, 418 left here in the fourth quarter. Wildcats leading Terrell 42-20. Let's take a break back in a moment. And 418 left to go in the fourth quarter. Wildcats lead 42-20 to for Terrell and uh, North Forney making a comeback. Uh, somebody set off their alarm clock. North Forney 28, Forney 13 there in the third quarter. They were delayed because of the weather. Yeah, Forney considered uh, to be one of the district's uh, least teams, and North Forney one of the best. So uh, that game beginning to turn a little bit for the better team. Uh, Caleb Mills is also in for the Wildcats on defense. Looked like an line, inside linebacker position, coached by Bruce Silman. Real gentleman if there ever was one. And third down and 17 here, and uh, Skinner back to pass. He wants to throw long. He sails it down the field, incomplete. Jace Thompson was trying to get footing so he could go over and get his uh, second official interception of the year. Most Wildcat coaches thought he got two last week. Thought that one that was ruled that had hit the ground, uh, he had actually gotten an interception on that. Uh, the officials did not agree, and so but Jace did have one along with one for uh, Austin Dodd last week. He was trying to get another right there, but that ball was thrown so nobody could catch it. Punt time now for Terrell. Ball at their own 34. 4-11 still to go here. Wildcats leading 42-20. And I think the aforementioned Thompson is back for the punt. Here's a kick, and uh, Thompson calls for the fair catch and then gets away from it. And uh, Terrell will kill the ball at uh, the Wildcat 39, or right at the 40. Well, let's call it the 39. So the Wildcats uh, will start from their own 39-yard line, and I would ex suspect uh, we, will, we will once again see <laughs> Noe Ponce with another opportunity to try to turn things around on kind of an inauspicious uh, beginning. Chase Haney is in as a receiver. I believe uh, Connor Bergen is also. And now a late reporter here, uh, Cameron Coffert. He's a B-back and a good uh, defensive tackle, but uh, Cameron also plays that B-back for uh, Casey Jeter, the assistant coach. And here's a running play for the Wildcats uh, straight up the field and uh, very little uh, going uh, that time. And see who carried the mail on that one. Is that a 29? Yes. Caleb Mills on the run. And uh, also receive, oh, Mason Arnold is in now at a, a receiver position. So Mason is out to the left. There's a lot of youngsters in there now. Noe Ponce, he was thrilled. He, he led the team to a touchdown in the scrimmage. Incomplete pass, tried to get it out to uh, Blaine Hohenberger. Incomplete. Pass from Noe Ponce intended for number 34. Oh, they said, they said Arnold was the intended receiver. Said I, I mentioned Hohenberger, but that was he, he 34, was not 14. So we have third down and 10 now for Noe Ponce and company. But Noe was just thrilled to lead the team to that touchdown against L.E. in that scrimmage. 
And handoff uh, running back to the right side and uh, tough going there for Caleb Miles. Handoff to Miles, he stopped for a loss on the play. And punt time for the Wildcats now. As uh, the clock under 310 and counting. Wildcats leading 42-20. I think that last touchdown kind of really took the steam out of Terrell. They realized that uh, it wasn't going to be their night. They really, I mean, they looked so confident. And when they roared back and made it a 22-20 ball game. And right there with that game-changing onside kick that uh, Jimmy talked about. There's a snap back on one hop to uh, Jermont oh, Bryant Amos, blocked. and it is blocked. And uh, uh, now Terrell trying to get a, a grip on that uh, grease pig. And... Both teams uh, trying to uh, get uh, possession there as the uh, ball was fumbled, trying to pick up the block punt. And Terrell came up with it. And uh, they'll, they're on the Wildcat 32-yard line. Uh, well, I thought Amos, was, uh, Brian Amos was going to get that off easily, but uh, that Terrell guy came out of nowhere and made a good block. So the block punt against the Wildcats. Just 2.32, all that's left here on the clock with the Wildcats with a 22-point lead. Trying to get into the district lead along with uh, Corsicana and uh, Kaufman and probably North Forney, we think. And those would be three of the teams uh, out of the four that are expected to get into the playoffs, but you don't decide that on paper. Here's a handoff second option around the right end inside the 20, down around the 17-yard line, a first down for the uh, Terrell Tigers. We did some research. Wildcats lead this series 11 to 10, going all the way back to 1956. And so the Wildcats trying to increase that uh, advantage to 12 to 10. First time that Coach Owens has played Terrell as uh, head coach of the Wildcats. We certainly scrimmaged them, but not a real game. Here's a quarterback keep around the corner, racing to the end zone. It'll be a touchdown for Terrell. Here uh, in about the final two minutes of the fourth quarter, a Terrell TD. And so that uh, Max Factor touchdown, a little bit of cosmetic help there on the scoreboard. Makes it 42-26, extra point pending, 2.05 left here in the uh, fourth quarter. They'll try a kick here. They seem to have a good place kicker, but my goodness, they've, they've had a tough time punting the ball tonight. The ball is down. Here's the extra point through the uprights, and the kick is good. 2.05 left uh, here in the fourth quarter. New score here from Gerald Prim Stadium. It's uh, Wildcats of Sulphur Springs uh, 42, and there we go, uh, Terrell 27. Let's take a break, and we'll be back in a moment. 2.05 left in the fourth quarter, 42 for the Cats, 27 for Terrell as Terrell kicks the ball down to the Cats. And the Cats do not believe that uh, this is going to be anything more than an onside kick. They've got a lot of players around that 50-yard line, just one receiver kind of back there in case it does get kicked deep. And Terrell approaches. It is an onside kick. And, uh, oh, it's uh, muffed by the Wildcats. Wonder who got on that thing. Uh, it's a free ball there. And, well, we can't get a signal out of these guys. Of course, they're still talking it over, make sure it went 10 yards and all that. I, I think it did. And then one of the Wildcats muffed the ball trying to recover it. Yes, it is uh, Terrell's ball on the recovery. Uh, officials just making sure among themselves that everything was uh, the way it was supposed to be. Terrell recovers the onside kick. Boy, that's two successful onside kicks. Coach Owens will be uh, biting nails on the coaches show tomorrow about those onside kicks. He'll say in that one, uh, somebody should have, uh, the good hand should have recovered there instead of muff that ball. Here's Terrell from the uh, 47. They're down by uh, 15 points. They'll throw the ball long. Receiver wide open. Ball, <laughs> he was juggling the football, and now he is pounding the turf. Oh, he, he couldn't have been wider open. He was all by his lonesome and just could not uh, keep from juggling that football. 
Second down and ten. The Wildcats dodge the bullet there. So. We, we had a penalty, too, in here. Oh, okay. They all would have been for naught anyway. Yeah. Let's see. Here's the call. One of those nasty holding penalties, probably. Well, let's see. I was going to wait. Okay. Call it You're going to yeah, wave it off again. Lyman downfield. All right. Penalty is declined. Second down. No. No, no, forget what I said. <laughs> Penalty declined. So second down and 10 from the 47-yard line. Things worked out well for the Wildcats. Now uh, Terrell back there in a uh, naked backfield uh, gets a rush. Now throws the ball down the field and uh, incomplete. Oh, I thought that guy caught it in stride, but again, could not hang on to the football. I think he, he touched the ball, and then the Wildcat kind of grabbed his shirt and took him off the ball. Colin Wade, I think, made a big mm -hmm. play there, coming by and just stripping out that football there. He is such a good football player. Kind of the heart and soul of this uh, Wildcat defense. And uh, back to pass again. There's a ball is caught uh, right around the 50-yard line. The Wildcats uh, twist the receiver to the ground. Gain of only about three on the pass. Three, Let's see where they four. officially mark it there. And it looks like it's going to be even less. No, now they move yeah. it. <laughs> the last moment up to the 50-yard line. Fourth down, so seven. fourth down and seven needed for uh, Terrell with 120. Oh, the snap seven. goes over the top of the oh, head. They've got a whistle. Let's see what he says. A time was called oh, a by the time Wildcats. Out taken by the Wildcats. Uh, uh, bad timeout. <laughs> they snapped it over his head. Oh well, you you, know, you never know. Uh, 115 left here in the fourth quarter. Wildcats 42, Terrell 27. Let's take a break. Back in a moment. 115. Okay. Monday night 7:45. The band performing here at Gerald Prim Stadium. We were trying to catch that a little earlier. 145 left to go in the game. 42 for the Wildcats. 27 for Terrell. And the Tigers uh, have fourth down and seven now, right at the midfield mark. And Skinner will throw the ball down the field. That ball is caught. The receiver's helmet flies off, but he moves down uh, inside the 25. They're going to mark it at the 24-yard line. I think that was uh, Jaquavius Morris on the catch. It was a, quite a play. It's, you see all the time those players gaining yards with no helmet on. I wonder how they feel about that. Big rush here on Skinner. The pass is caught. Good uh, defense. Oh, but they let him out of the box for just a second. Receiver moved across the 20. Flag down. JT Richardson on the catch. Again, the first time I saw that name, I said, was that the big bopper's name? But his name was J.P. Richardson. They had a block in the back called against uh, Terrell, but they've got a player down injured. Injury timeout with just 54 seconds remaining in the football game. Wildcats 42, Terrell 27. We'll take a break back in a moment. 54 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter, 42 to 27. Our score, Wildcats leading. We've got a penalty being marked off here for a block in the back against uh, Terrell. And that was J.T. Richardson that was the receiver on that last play, and he is uh, limping off the field. So here is a first down now and 14 from the 28-yard line. Just 50 seconds left. Skinner back to pass. Sails it toward the end zone. And the Wildcats uh, got an interception. Nice catch hey, uh, by the Wildcats. I believe that was Landry Tyson. Okay. I'm, uh, again, having to look through some really dirty glass. And Yes, 16 Landry Tyson. So nice catch. He certainly knows how to catch that ball in the end zone, <laughs> whether he's playing offense or defense. And that is a, a, a you know, one a yet another change for the Wildcats to have uh, Landry Tyson, who's always been a big target on offense, but have him now back as uh, one of the primary safeties along with Austin Dodd. But there's a, you know, a lot of guys are playing this year. They they know that they've got to keep everybody fresh. So. If somebody spends a whole lot of time on uh, defense, they might not be playing too much offense the next time. Wildcats uh, trying to run out the last 44 seconds. They'll bring in DeCorian Young to uh, do that knee play, which he did so well that time. 
And looks like they will not have to snap the ball again. There's more time on the play clock than there is on the uh, game clock. Just by a second. <laughs> Just by a second. That makes all the difference. And uh, But they will look like they will... Maybe just for practice. I'm not sure DeCorian probably being the uh, bright uh, person no. he is. Yeah, say, we don't have to do that. And uh, they're trying to get the what's left of this crowd to kind of emit a roar here of uh, approval that the Wildcats are going to win this football game. Uh, the score of 42 to 27. Well, it wasn't a Picasso or even a Rembrandt or any of those other good painters. But uh, the Wildcats will take it as they go 2-0 and on the season. As they've, uh, and they win their district opener. Always a huge uh, thing. And move into a first-place tie with teams like Corsicana. And we think uh, North Forney and, and uh, one other team. In, oh, Kaufman. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be playing Royce City next week. They had the bye, so they have their 0-0 in district play. And so they'll be having their district opener. And they'll be all... Uh, ready to go. I, I think I need to do a lot more research on them, but I think uh, I heard Coach Owens talking about them, and it sounds like they're two tight ends and smash mouth football. So that's that's going to be interesting. The Wildcats have not uh, played that uh, kind of team this year, as we've seen uh, one flex bone, and one is enough I think, <laughs> after what we saw. But the uh, defense, uh, again, once they were challenged, they, they kind of came to play as the offense picked it up. And Coach Owens has talked so many times about how offense picks up defense and defense picks up offense, and they feed off each other. And so when the offense begin to play better, the defense begin to play better. And uh, everything uh, clo closed down pretty good with the Wildcats winning by 15 points. And uh, that's going to wrap it up, Jimmy. And, uh, boy, what a, what a weird, sloppy night uh, this has been in a lot of different ways. And, and maybe one of these times we'll actually have a band performance. <laughs> we, we hope so. Yeah, we're 0 for 2 in that band department. Don't forget, 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, Coach's Show. Don Julian and Coach Greg Owens will be discussing tonight's game. Stay tuned right after our game tonight, or when we finished our broadcast here tonight at Prim Stadium, uh, high school scoreboard from uh, Texas State Network. Kaufman beats Ennis 37-7. Corsicana beats Greenville 40-14. Wildcats win 42-27. North Forney leads 35-20 over 40 in a game that was delayed by the weather. We're glad that you've joined us. We hope you have a great evening. Evening. And as the Wildcats celebrate with the school song, we say to you, for Don Julian, our play-by-play -play man, Doug Haston, who videotaped the game for replay on Channel 18, Butch Bernie, who's doing our statistics for us, I'm Jim Rogers. Have a great evening. Good night.